Magic Doctor, CEO Lady's Humble Husband. Chapter 3726 to Chapter 3750. Have fun reading as well as listening. Chapter 3726. At the entrance to Water Bubble City, the Merfolk guards, covered in scales, were hiding behind rocks, fending off the relentless bombardment from outside. Across from them, a group of purple-striped sharks blocked the entrance to Water Bubble City, opening their mouths and launching waves of energy towards the city. The continuous bombardment had caused heavy casualties among the guards at the entrance, with more than half already dead or injured, and they were on the verge of collapse. At this moment, the purple-striped shark leader, Hunting Shark, launched another attack, unleashing a purple-blue lightning bolt that struck down like a thunderbolt. Run away! Faced with such an onslaught, the Merfolk guards finally couldn't hold on and fled in a panic. With this chaos, the entire defensive line completely disintegrated and was quickly defeated. In an instant, the scene became chaotic. The purple-striped sharks laughed heartily, preparing to advance and break into Water Bubble City. But just as they were about to move, suddenly, a person rushed out, blocking Hunting Shark's blue lightning. The lightning flashed a few times on this person and then dissipated without any further effect. And that person was completely unscathed. Hunting Shark's expression changed as he looked at Chen Fei and shouted, Who are you? At this moment, Yuan Qi appeared beside Hunting Shark and spoke, Leader Hunting Shark, this is the Chen that young Master Gu specifically wanted. Although Chen Fei had already told Emoli about Yuan Qi's betrayal, seeing this scene still filled Emoli with shock, and she couldn't help but exclaim, Senior brother, why are you doing this? Yuan Qi looked at Emoli and sneered, Emoli, you still have the nerve to ask me? Think about how many times I pursued you, and you never agreed. But then you went outside, and for money, you could sleep with anyone. And it was even with a lowly Huazu. You're just a cheap slut. Mo Li's face turned pale with anger and urgency, Senior brother, it's not like that, you misunderstood. Young Master Gu told me everything, do you still want to lie to me? Yuan Qi said coldly. I didn't. Mo Li tried to explain. Yuan Qi interrupted angrily, enough, I don't believe you. Hunting Shark, seeing this, laughed, it's not worth it for a woman. When we take Water Bubble City, there will be plenty of women. I'll leave this one for you, and you can do whatever you want with her. Upon hearing this, Yuan Qi's eyes lit up, and he quickly thanked him, Thank you, Leader Hunting Shark. Mo Li's face turned pale, her body trembling. She never expected that the senior brother she admired would be such a person. Seeing this, Chen Fei squeezed Mo Li's trembling hand and comforted her, Don't worry, they won't live much longer. Ha ha ha, we won't live much longer. Yuan Qi and Hunting Shark both laughed loudly. But just as they were laughing wildly, Chen Fei suddenly moved. Like a flash, Chen Fei appeared beside Hunting Shark, his right hand striking down through the air. Hunting Shark reacted quickly, frantically whipping his tail and dashing forward. At the same time, he opened his bloody mouth and spewed out a swirling water column. His attack was both fierce and rapid. However, in Chen Fei's eyes, it wasn't impressive at all. Chen Fei didn't even make any evasive moves, he directly faced Hunting Shark's attack. His body remained still as he brought down his right hand. Smack! Chen Fei's right hand landed on Hunting Shark. Hunting Shark felt a tremendous force rushing towards him and quickly twisted his body, trying to use his body curves and water flow to dissipate the force. But when the force hit his body, Hunting Shark was shocked. The strength was far beyond his expectations. Although he managed to shed some of the force, the remaining power was still immense, slamming his massive body into the seabed sand and rocks. The violent energy even blasted a big hole in Hunting Shark's body, causing blood to gush out wildly. Hunting Shark let out a miserable scream, his body writhing madly in a last-ditch struggle. But Chen Fei's left hand descended, and the palm force shattered Hunting Shark's body and his vital core simultaneously. At this moment, Hunting Shark's previous attack reached Chen Fei, crackling away before dissipating without leaving a scratch on Chen Fei. Witnessing this scene, the purple-striped sharks and Yuan Qi were dumbfounded. They couldn't believe that this guy was so powerful, killing their leader, a seventh-level expert of the Yuan core stage, with just two palm strikes. This terrifying strength was completely beyond their expectations. Not only the opponents, but even Chen Fei's own side, Xian Yuanjiang, the Aoki Palace Master, and M. Oli, were all shocked. Although they had heard from Chen Fei or Chen Hu about Chen Fei's great strength, they didn't know just how powerful he was. Seeing it firsthand now, they finally had a clear understanding, and they were all stunned. As both sides were in a state of shock, young Lord Han Xian finally arrived, followed by Master Sun and Xiao Lin Palace Master. Young Lord, it's dangerous outside, you shouldn't. Master Sun shouted, but when he saw the scene before him, he was stunned as well. What happened? His question broke the silence, snapping the purple-striped sharks out of their shock, and they began to flee. Yuan Qi also hurriedly swam upwards. Why are they running? Han Xian asked in confusion. Mo Li responded, young master Chen struck, killing hunting shark with two palms. What, this? 
Han Xian, Master Sun, and Xiao Lin Palace Master were all stunned, their faces filled with disbelief. Master Sun even instinctively shook his head, this, this is impossible. Xian Yuanjiang sneered, ha, if you don't believe it, you can try it yourself. You. Master Sun frowned. Just as the two were about to argue again. Chen Fei looked up and said, there are more people above. Let's go take a look. After speaking, Chen Fei gently exerted force and shot up like a rocket, straight towards the surface. The others hurriedly followed him. At this moment, on the surface, over a dozen large ships had completely controlled the waters. On the ships, flags fluttered with the large character Gu written on them. Gu Zhou, Gu Zhenhai, and Gu Xiaonan stood at the bow, watching the water. Gu Xiaonan gritted his teeth, Dad, that guy ruined our Gu family's plans. This time, we must capture him. Gu Zhenhai said, with hunting shark attacking and the merfolk's internal assistance, there should be no problem. The father and son were full of confidence. However, the strongest among them, Gu Zhou, remained stern and silent. Because he was the one who had personally fought with Chen Fei. At that time, that kid had exchanged a palm strike with him and actually forced him back. Although Gu Zhou hadn't used his full strength back then, it seemed that the kid hadn't either. So, Gu Zhou couldn't determine Chen Fei's true level of power. To be on the safe side, he had sent a message back to his family and prepared an ace up his sleeve. I hope my preparations are unnecessary. Chapter 3727 just as Gu Xinhai and Gu Xiaonan were feeling triumphant, suddenly, a figure burst out of the water. The two were startled and were about to call for action. The figure shouted frantically, Young Master Gu, save me. Focusing their gaze, they realized it was Yuan Qi, and their faces immediately darkened. Gu Xiaonan demanded, Yuan Qi, what happened? Yuan Qi, his face full of panic, urgently replied, Hunting Shark was killed. They're coming after us. What? Gu Xiaonan's expression changed. Who killed Hunting Shark? Who's coming after us? Gu Zhenhai quickly asked. Although Hunting Shark was just a tool for the Gu family under the guise of an ally in battle, he was still a 7th level Yuan core stage C beast. Even if injured and unable to use his full strength, he should have at least the combat power of the 5th or 6th level of the Yuan core stage. For Hunting Shark to be killed, and so quickly, was a serious matter. Yuan Qi looked at the two, hastily explaining, it was that Huazu man named Chen Fei. He killed Hunting Shark with just two palm strikes. Han Xian, Jiao Lin, and the others are all following him. Hearing this, the Gu family members' faces turned serious. Gu Zhou was about to say something. Suddenly, the surface of the water exploded with a loud splash, and a figure shot out. Then, one figure after another emerged from the water. Looking closely, it was undoubtedly Chen Fei, Han Xian, Jiao Lin, and the others. The Gu family members immediately tensed up. Chen Fei, with a smile on his face, scanned the Gu family and said, Everyone's here, that's convenient. Without delay, Chen Fei made his move, striking towards Gu Zhou. Kill. Gu Zhou roared, attacking Chen Fei with all his might. In an instant, the two clashed with surging energy, colliding in midair, creating explosive sounds and churning the water in clouds with a constant roar. Clearly, Gu Zhou knew Chen Fei was formidable. This time, he attacked with full force, without any reservations. Meanwhile, Gu Zhenhai and Gu Xiaonan reacted swiftly. With a shout, they charged towards Han Xian. Their main target was the chubby young lord. If they could kill him, the Gu family's objective would be mostly accomplished. Seeing this, Master Sun immediately got up and confronted them, engaging in battle. Upon seeing this, Gu Zhenhai ordered again, kill Han Xian. From the surrounding Gu family ships, over a dozen figures sprang out, all attacking Han Xian. Although these attackers weren't top tier, their combined assault posed a serious threat, especially with Han Xian lacking personal guards. The situation quickly turned dangerous. Master Sun was alarmed, gritting his teeth as he tried to fight back and return to save Han Xian. But Gu Xinhai and Gu Xiaonan, aware of Master Sun's intentions, naturally would not let him succeed. They accelerated their attacks, entangling Master Sun so he couldn't break free. Young Lord, run! Master Sun shouted urgently, filled with worry. But it seemed it would be too late. At the critical moment, a fiery red figure suddenly dashed in front of Han Xian. It was Chen Hua. Chen Hua turned to the tense Han Xian and smiled, don't worry, chubby. I'm here. With that, Chen Hua charged at the attackers. In an instant, Chen Hua transformed into a crimson flame, weaving through the Gu family members. Screams filled the air. In just over 10 seconds, the dozen or so Gu family attackers were all crying out as they fell into the sea. Chen Hua, enveloped in flames, stood in the air, unscathed. This sight made Master Sun breathe a sigh of relief. The others looked at Chen Fei in astonishment, unable to believe what they had just witnessed. Especially Jiao Lin, who had initially dismissed Chen Fei as merely an add-on to young Lord Han Xian. However, after seeing Chen Fei kill Hunting Shark with two palm strikes, Jiao Lin was shocked and finally recognized Chen Fei's strength. 
Now, Chen Hua's actions further astonished him. He had never imagined that not only was Chen Fei formidable, but even his subordinate possessed such power. Chen Hua's recent display of power suggested he had at least the strength of a fifth-level Yuan core stage cultivator. Who are these two, and how can they be so powerful? The commotion naturally caught the attention of the Gu family. Gu Xinhai and Gu Xiaonan's faces darkened, sensing trouble. Gu Zhou, who was fiercely battling Chen Fei, also glanced over, his expression serious as he gritted his teeth and shouted, Fight, fight, fight! Three consecutive shouts of, Fight! echoed over the sea. Suddenly, a figure descended from the sky at great speed, attacking Chen Fei. The aura and strength of this person were no less than Gu Zhou's, perhaps even slightly superior. At that moment, Gu Zhou also erupted with power, his attacks becoming even more ferocious. The combined assault of two seventh-level Yuan core stage experts seemed to overwhelm Chen Fei. Seeing this, Chen Fei suddenly smiled and looked at Gu Zhou, is this your trump card? Gu Zhou, seeing Chen Fei's smiling face, was momentarily stunned and frowned. Chen Fei was right, this new attacker, Gu Wei, was Gu Zhou's hidden ace. Gu Wei was a refugee Gu Zhou had saved in his youth. They secretly became sworn brothers, grew up together, and even trained under the same master. As Gu Zhou climbed the ranks in the Gu family through his cultivation strength, Gu Wei, equally powerful, became his shadow, protecting him and handling tasks that required discretion. Because of his secretive nature and high skill level, few in the Gu family knew of Gu Wei's existence. Gu Zhou rarely revealed Gu Wei. Feeling threatened this time, Gu Zhou had specially called Gu Wei to lay in ambush as the family's trump card. Now, with his trump card revealed, Gu Zhou had no retreat. He roared, intensifying his assault. Kill him. In an instant, Gu Zhou and Gu Wei gritted their teeth and erupted with power, almost burning themselves out as they launched a deadly assault on Chen Fei. Seeing this, Gu Xinhai and Gu Xiaonan also shouted and intensified their attacks. It was clear they intended to seize this opportunity to take Chen Fei down in one fell swoop. At the critical moment, as Chen Fei faced their relentless and deadly attacks, he suddenly smiled at Gu Zhou. Since you're serious, I'll have to get serious too. With that, Chen Fei's smile turned sharp, and he raised his right hand, revealing a black long sword. The Nine Extreme Sword. Slash. Injecting his energy into the sword, he swung it through the air. In that moment, Gu Zhou and Gu Wei felt an incredibly fierce aura rushing towards them. Their expressions changed drastically, and they hesitated before shouting, run. But just as they turned to flee, the sword light was already upon them. The razor-sharp sword energy sliced down effortlessly, splitting Gu Zhou and Gu Wei in half. The sword energy continued, cutting through several large Gu family ships in its path, splitting them in two and sending them sinking into the sea. The sword energy struck the sea, cleaving the water itself and creating a gap that remained for more than 10 seconds before the seawater flowed back in and it disappeared. The power of that single sword strike was terrifying beyond measure. Chapter 3728 The battlefield, which had been filled with fierce fighting moments ago, suddenly fell silent. With Chen Fei's single sword strike, as Gu Zhou and Gu Wei were severed in two, Gu Xinhai's face changed drastically. He knew that in this battle, the Gu family had lost. At that moment, his fighting spirit vanished instantly. He let out a wild shout and, taking his son Gu Xiaonan, turned to flee. Quick, run! With Gu Xinhai fleeing, the remaining Gu family fighters lost their will to fight, dropping their weapons and armor, and fled as well. The allied purple-striped shark clan didn't need any encouragement, diving into the water and quickly departing. Chen Fei wasn't about to let them escape. He lightly leapt into the air, stretched out his hand, and grabbed downward. As a result, both Gu Xinhai and Gu Xiaonan were captured and brought back by Chen Fei. The remaining stragglers were dealt with by Chen Hua, who showed no mercy, sweeping through and taking out many. Chen Hua even brought back Yuan Qi, who had been trying to escape secretly, and threw him before Jiao Lin, saying, Your disciple, you deal with him. When Chen Fei returned, everyone hurried up to him, faces full of surprise and joy. Han Xian couldn't help but exclaim, Chen Fei, you're amazing. Chen Fei didn't say much, tossing Gu Xinhai and Gu Xiaonan before Han Xian, saying, I'll leave these two to you, your highness. Han Xian hesitated, then looked at Master Sun. Master Sun thought for a moment and said, Your Highness, the Prefect should already be aware of the situation, and his people may arrive soon. Why not hold on to them and wait for the Prefect's people to deal with them? That works too, Han Xian nodded. With the battle over and the crisis averted, everyone began their journey back. There was no need to stay in Shuepao City any longer, so they headed directly back to White Moon Island. Even Xiao Lin, the palace master of Coldwater Palace, after giving some instructions, accompanied them back to White Moon Island. After a night's rest, the prefect's envoys arrived the next morning, finding their group to investigate the matter. Taking advantage of a free moment, Chen Fei, along with M.O. Li, sought out palace master Jiao Lin again. Master, Chen Gongzi has something to discuss with you. M.O. Li said. To her surprise, Jiao Lin, who usually had a stern demeanor, now wore a smile and hurried to the door, saying, 
If Chen Gongzi has something to discuss, just let me know and I'll come to you. There's no need for you to trouble yourself by coming here. Ah. Mo Li was stunned, not expecting her master to change his attitude so quickly. Chen Fei, however, laughed heartily and said, Palace Master Jiao Lin is too polite. Since I have a request, it's only right to visit you. Jiao Lin welcomed Chen Fei inside, seated him, and then poured tea for him before asking with a smile, What can I do for you, Chen Gongzi? Chen Fei got straight to the point, I mentioned the sacred ground within your clan last time. What's your decision, Palace Master? At the mention of the sacred ground, Jiao Lin's expression changed, showing hesitation and struggle. Seeing this, Chen Fei was about to speak again, offering his conditions. But Jiao Lin gritted his teeth and nodded, Chen Gongzi is a savior of our clan. Opening the sacred ground to you is only right. Chen Fei was overjoyed at this and bowed, Thank you, Palace Master. I will remember this kindness and repay it generously. As they were exchanging pleasantries, Master Sun suddenly walked into the room. Master Sun, what brings you here? Jiao Lin quickly greeted him. Master Sun's eyes fell on Chen Fei, and he said, Chen Gongzi, the envoy from the prefecture city requests your presence. He says a distinguished guest wishes to meet you. A distinguished guest. Chen Fei's heart stirred, and he nodded, I understand. Jiao Lin couldn't help but quietly ask Master Sun, why does the envoy from the prefecture city want to see Chen Gongzi? Even though his skills are remarkable, his status is. Master Sun shook his head slightly, I'm not sure either. It's the envoy's order. Jiao Lin continued to ask, and the distinguished guest is? Master Sun shook his head again, the envoy didn't say. This. Jiao Lin found the situation strange but decided to follow along, I'll come and see as well. In the main hall, the little prince sat on the left, with Xian Yuan Jiangshan and the Greenwood Hall master beside him. On the right sat a middle-aged man with a mustache, the envoy from the prefecture city, Han Zhu. The central seat was still empty. After Han Zhu had inquired about the Gu family's rebellion from Han Xian and the others, he suddenly requested to see Chen Fei. That's why Han Xian sent Master Sun to invite Chen Fei. However, Han Xian didn't understand why the envoy wanted to see Chen Fei and was somewhat worried. He probed, Uncle Han Zhu, Chen Gongzi exposed the Gu family's plot and made great contributions. Is the distinguished guest here to reward him? Han Zhu smiled, Little Prince, don't worry about it. You'll find out soon. At this moment, Chen Fei entered the hall, glanced around, and casually said, Who wants to see me? Han Zhu stood up, about to speak. Just then, a figure walked out from behind the central seat, smiling as he stepped forward. Instantly, everyone felt the air in the room grow heavy with an invisible pressure enveloping them. The person in the central seat smiled warmly, his expression calm. Who is this? This oppressive presence led everyone to guess the person's identity. Chen Fei also wasn't an exception. He lightly channeled his Yuan energy to break the pressure, only to find it instantly crushed and dissipated. Immediately, Chen Fei understood the person's identity. He looked up and said loudly, is this how Prefect Han treats his guests? At his words, the man in the central seat lightly waved his hand, and the pressure disappeared instantly. At that moment, everyone was startled and looked at the man in the central seat. Prefect Han, he is. Han Jingchuan, the prefect of Daxing Prefecture. Why would the prefect come here? Although Prefect Han Jingchuan's name was well known in Daxing Prefecture, few had actually seen him. Even Han Xian, his nominal relative and the little prince of the Han family, had only seen Han Jingchuan once in his childhood and never again. Not to mention Jiao Lin and Master Sun. They were stunned upon learning of the prefect's arrival. After all, the prefect personally coming here was beyond anyone's expectations. Amidst the astonished gazes, Prefect Han Jingchuan smiled slightly at Chen Fei and said, as expected of the deputy prefect of Daiming Prefecture, young and promising. This statement further shocked everyone. Daiming Prefecture, Deputy Prefect? Chen Gongzi, he, he is. The upheaval in Daiming Prefecture, with the prefect being the former demon Tian Ming and the vice prefect being Xia Minglei, and their disciple being the deputy prefect. Could it be that Chen Gongzi is actually? Chapter 3729 Han Jingchuan looked at the astonished crowd and smiled, it seems the deputy prefect is quite low-key. These words undoubtedly confirmed Chen Fei's identity to everyone present. Knowing there was no point in hiding it any longer, Chen Fei nodded to the crowd and admitted, Indeed, I am from Daiming Prefecture. Prefect Tian Ming is my master, and Deputy Prefect Xia Minglei is my martial uncle. After speaking, Chen Fei looked at Han Jingchuan and asked, May I ask why Prefect Han summoned me here? Han Jingchuan smiled and replied, Deputy Prefect, you have aided Daxing Prefecture by defeating traitors and saving my Han family relatives. As the head of my clan, I naturally came to express my gratitude. Chen Fei understood this was merely a courtesy. If it were just to express thanks, the envoy Han Zhu would have sufficed, there was no need for Han Jingchuan to come personally. Thus, Chen Fei responded, Prefect Han, you can just call me Xiao Chen. Han Xian saved my elders, so it was only right for me to help. Prefect Han need not mention it. 
After exchanging pleasantries, Han Jingchuan turned to the others and said, Han Ju, take everyone to rest. I need to have a private chat with Xiao Chen. Everyone understood that Prefect Han wanted to discuss serious matters, so they all got up and left. Once everyone was gone, and only the two of them remained, Chen Fei was about to speak. At that moment, Han Jingchuan took out a letter and handed it to Chen Fei in midair. Read this first. Whose letter is it? Chen Fei took the letter, feeling a bit puzzled, but he quickly opened it and began reading. The letter was from Tian Ming, and it was short, so Chen Fei finished it quickly. Han Jingchuan observed Chen Fei's reaction and smiled, finished reading. Then come with me to my prefecture city. Prefect Han, this. Chen Fei still felt a bit sudden and couldn't fully grasp the situation. Han Jingchuan smiled and said, if you don't understand, let me explain it to you. Chen Fei organized his thoughts and said, Prefect Han, my master's letter suggests that I go to Daxing Prefecture City with you and follow your arrangements. And all this is related to the upcoming selection day. Han Jingchuan nodded, exactly. Chen Fei still didn't fully understand and asked, I don't see the connection. Why do I need to go to the Prefecture City, and how does this relate to the selection day? Moreover, the selection day for the Heavenly Demon is still decades away. Han Jingchuan chuckled softly and patiently explained, it seems Tian Ming is still too lazy and doesn't clarify things. Let me explain it in detail. The selection day for the Heavenly Demon is indeed still 60 years away, but recently, the Great Spirit King announced the establishment of a Heavenly Star Academy in the Great Spirit Prefecture, which will recruit students and provide guidance and instruction. Hearing this, Chen Fei was still confused. The Great Spirit King founding an academy, how is this related to the selection day? Don't worry, let me explain, Han Jingchuan said. You must know that for tens of thousands of years, the selection day for the Heavenly Demon has always been managed by the Great Spirit King. And each time, the talented students chosen from the Great Spirit Prefecture are the most numerous among all the prefectures. In fact, in recent sessions, this trend has become more pronounced. In the last selection day, students from the Great Spirit Prefecture accounted for one-third of the total spots. This is related to the strength of the Great Spirit Prefecture, but it also has much to do with the various covert training efforts of the Great Spirit King and his close relationship with the Heavenly Demon. Therefore, before each selection day, qualified talented students would try every means to go to the Great Spirit Prefecture, seek connections, and strive to get some early information to increase their chances of success. Previously, this was all done in secret, and whether one succeeded depended on their own abilities. But this time, the situation is different. The Great Spirit King openly established an academy and is massively recruiting local students. This clearly aims to provide early training for the Great Spirit Prefecture's talents to achieve better results on the selection day. Moreover, the name of the academy is quite significant. Heaven represents the Heavenly Demon Clan, and Star represents our facing domain. Combining these two characters gives you Heavenly Star Academy. Upon hearing this, Chen Fei immediately understood. If the selection day was akin to the college entrance examination in China's education system on Earth, then this Heavenly Star Academy would be equivalent to a prestigious pre-exam tutoring class. Top students aiming for high scores would naturally want to enter this tutoring class. Understanding this, Chen Fei considered further and asked, so my master wants me to follow Prefect Han's arrangements, meaning you want. Prefect Han nodded. You guessed correctly. I want you to exchange and compete with the talents of our Daxing Prefecture. Because soon, they will go to the Great Spirit Prefecture to participate in the admissions for the Heavenly Star Academy. Finally, Han Jingchuan added, of course, Tian Ming should be taking you there as well. Now, Chen Fei thoroughly understood. Since it was the intention of Lord Tian Ming, and Chen Fei indeed wanted to interact with other talents from the major prefectures, he nodded in agreement. Xiao Chen will follow Prefect Han's arrangements. However, Prefect Han, please give me a few days. I have some matters to attend to. Chen Fei was thinking of the issue concerning the Merfolk's sacred land, so he specifically requested a few more days. Hearing this, Han Jingchuan paused, then seemingly realizing something, he smiled and said, it's normal for young people to have rich feelings. I'll give you a week. Spend some more time with the little beauty by your side. Ah. Chen Fei was taken aback, then quickly realized that Prefect Han had misunderstood, thinking that he needed time to spend intimately with Emo Li. He wanted to explain, but Prefect Han had already stood up and left. After leaving the hall, Chen Fei went directly to see Palace Master Jiaolin, bringing up the matter of the sacred land again. This time, Palace Master Jiaolin did not hesitate and agreed immediately, even putting on a fawning smile, agreeing to open the tribe's sacred land to Chen Fei. Chen Fei expressed his gratitude, then found his master Xianyuan Jiangshan and Palace Master Qingmu, explaining the situation to them. He coordinated with personnel to escort them back to the Ming Dynasty quickly. Once everything was arranged, Chen Fei took Mo Li and, along with Jiaolin, returned to Bubble City. After making some arrangements in Cold Water Palace, Jiaolin personally led Chen Fei, opening one secret door after another, until they arrived at a massive undersea canyon. Lord Chen, the sacred land is just ahead. This sacred land was discovered by our Merfolk tribe 10,000 years ago. It was originally a barren land. 
One of our ancestors, while escaping to this place, accidentally discovered a stone cave inside. Entering it can enhance our divine soul. However, while the sacred land can enhance the divine soul, it also has a corrosive effect on one's divine sea. Therefore, one cannot stay in the sacred land for too long, otherwise, the divine sea will be damaged, leading to madness or even death. Please be aware of this, Lord Chen. I understand. Chen Fei nodded and then stepped into the canyon. Chapter 3730 Walking into the canyon, Chen Fei heard a crackling sound beneath his feet. He looked down and was astonished to see that the ground was covered with layers of bones. Due to age and the seawater, the bones were extremely fragile, even a light step from Chen Fei caused them to crumble. Most of the bones appeared to be from various sea creatures, interspersed with a few human skeletons. This sacred land is quite unusual, Chen Fei muttered to himself. With a slight push of force, he propelled himself forward through the air. Reaching the end of the canyon, Chen Fei saw an entrance about the height of a person in front of him. Entering through the entrance, Chen Fei immediately felt the ground soften beneath his feet. Then a special fragrance rushed into his nostrils, causing his spirit to tremble and become alert. Because this fragrance was exactly the same as the one he had smelled on Imoli before. This sacred land really can enhance the aura of the divine soul. This is excellent, Chen Fei rejoiced and quickly began his cultivation. Thus, Chen Fei practiced in the cave while Jialin guarded outside the sacred land. Time passed slowly. One day later, Jialin peeked into the canyon but found no sign of Chen Fei. He muttered to himself, it's been a day, and young master Chen is still inside. He truly lives up to his reputation. Two days later, there was still no movement in the canyon. Jialin began to feel a slight sense of urgency, muttering, young master Chen hasn't come out yet. I hope nothing has happened. After all, staying inside for a long time can damage the divine sea, leading to irreversible consequences like madness or death. Three days later, it remained quiet. Now, Jialin could hardly contain his anxiety. Since we discovered this sacred land, the merfolk have never stayed in it for more than three days. If he stays longer, his divine sea will suffer irreversible damage, possibly causing him to go insane and perish. For days later, everything was still normal in the canyon. Unable to sit still at the entrance, Jialin couldn't help but enter the canyon and approach the cave entrance to call Chen Fei out. However, upon closer inspection, he saw that Chen Fei inside was safe and sound, showing no signs of trouble. So, Jialin retreated. Five days later, everything remained unchanged. Jialin checked on Chen Fei several times, worried about his divine sea. Yet Chen Fei seemed completely unaffected. Six days later, Jialin, waiting outside, was completely stunned. He couldn't imagine who could stay in that sacred land for six whole days without any discomfort. After all, three days was already the limit for the merfolk. Even Jialin himself could only endure a day and a half. Is everything really okay? If something happens to young Master Chen and I didn't warn him, what should I do? While Jialin was pondering, inside the cave at this moment, Chen Fei opened his eyes. After six days of cultivation, Chen Fei felt that his divine soul had strengthened significantly, and even his divine sea seemed to have expanded slightly. Chen Fei initially wanted to continue, but soon realized he had reached a limit where further practice would yield diminishing returns. Therefore, he voluntarily ended his cultivation. However, instead of leaving directly, Chen Fei took a look around the cave. After observing carefully for a while, Chen Fei indeed noticed something unusual. Around the cave, there were concentric circles of traces, neatly arranged and extending to both sides, becoming smaller and smaller in a very orderly manner. Moreover, the soft ground beneath his feet didn't seem like ordinary sand or stone. Gathering his energy, Chen Fei pierced the ground and dug out a piece. Upon closer inspection, he was genuinely astonished. Because what he had unearthed wasn't ground at all but a piece of flesh, a piece that had fused with minerals from the seawater over a long period. This. Chen Fei's mind raced. He examined the surroundings near the concentric circles of traces, gently scraping away to observe closely. Then, Chen Fei couldn't help but widen his eyes in surprise. These are bones. This entire cave isn't a stone cave at all, it's the carcass of a massive creature. This enormous creature died here, and its flesh gradually decomposed, blending its bones with the surrounding environment. The concentric circles of traces are rows of ribs from this animal. Realizing this, Chen Fei emerged from the cave and cleared away the rocks, corals, and debris around it. Then, he swam upward and looked down from a height. From above, the shape of the cave below became very apparent. It wasn't a cave at all but the corpse of a gigantic animal, resembling something like a blue whale. It seems this so-called sacred land is the transformed body of this blue whale after its death. Descending, Chen Fei muttered to himself softly but then thought of something else. However, even for a normal blue whale, no matter how high its cultivation, I've never heard of it having the effect of enhancing the divine soul. Could there be another reason? With this thought, Chen Fei re-entered the cave and conducted a thorough investigation inside. Finally, at the end of the cave, Chen Fei dug through the soil and found a half-piece of what looked like a skull. Inside this half-skull, there was a round small hole, 
from which a fine blue line extended outward from the center of the bone. Chen Fei dug into the bone a bit more and leaned closer, instantly detecting a strong aroma, several times more potent than what he had sensed upon entering the cave himself. Chen Fei tried other places and found similar blue lines in all the bones, each emitting the same fragrance. And the starting point of these blue lines was the small circular hole in the skull. Seeing this, Chen Fei had a rough idea in his mind. Initially, this merfolk sacred land must have been the body of a gigantic sea creature, akin to a blue whale. For some unknown reason, whether due to its own mutation or ingestion of some treasure, this sea creature eventually formed a small spherical object inside its skull. This small sphere had the effect of enhancing the divine soul, spreading gradually throughout the creature's body along its bones. Ultimately, this sea creature died here, and the spherical object in its skull vanished without a trace. However, the remnants of its body remained, integrating with the surrounding environment to form this cave. It was eventually discovered by the merfolk and became their sacred land. Even just the remains of its body, after so many years, still have such effects. Then, to what extent did that small spherical object in the sea creature's body have an effect? Chen Fei couldn't help but marvel. Afterward, Chen Fei emerged from the canyon. Seeing the anxious Jialin, who hurried to meet him, scrutinizing him from side to side, Jialin finally breathed a sigh of relief upon confirming Chen Fei's well-being. Chen Fei didn't withhold anything, explaining his findings and speculations to Jialin. After that, he bid farewell to Jialin and returned to Baiyue Island. Chapter 3731 Just as Chen Fei set foot on the island, he heard a flurry of news, most of which concerned the Gu family. Due to previous events, the Gu family had come under severe scrutiny. Key members of the clan were all detained, and those who attempted to flee or resist were immediately subdued. The Gu family's assets were also seized and placed under direct control. Other families on the island associated with the Gu family, including the Purple Mark Shark clan, were implicated and subjected to strict investigation ordered by Master Han. As a result, the dynamics on Baiyue Island underwent a significant change. A family with good relations with Han Xian, the Yun family, rose to prominence on the island, subtly positioning itself to replace the Gu family as the new leading clan of Baiyue Island. Of course, apart from these confirmed reports, various rumors and secretive information were rampant. Some said that the entire incident involving the Gu family was a trap set by Master Han to provoke such an established and deeply rooted family into revealing themselves, only to crush them in one fell swoop. This was because the Han family's position in Daxing Prefecture was not as secure as the Wu, Song, Qin, and other families in their respective prefectures. The positions of the heads of those families had been passed down for hundreds of thousands of years, deeply entrenched with formidable family strength, ensuring their positions were highly stable. In contrast, the Han family of Daxing Prefecture was different. The current head, Han Jingchuan, had ascended from the smaller world beneath Daxing Prefecture tens of thousands of years ago through rigorous cultivation. Subsequently, he displayed outstanding abilities, garnered substantial support, and thus assumed the position of head. There were even rumors that the previous head intended to pass on leadership to another, but Han Jingchuan resorted to unscrupulous means to secure the position. For these reasons, Han Jingchuan's position as head of Daxing Prefecture was not as secure as Chen Fei had imagined. There were numerous opposition forces in private, especially among those long-established families spanning hundreds of thousands of years, many of whom were keenly eyeing Han Jingchuan's position. The Gu family of Baiyue Island was just one example among these families. However, the Gu family was relatively peripheral among these prominent families. The truly profound and powerful families mostly gathered on the mainland of Daxing Island. Therefore, some speculated that Han Jingchuan's actions against the Gu family were also intended to send a message to other major families. Chen Fei paid no attention to these rumors. He sought out Han Jingchuan's messenger, Han Zhu, and prepared to depart for the capital city of Daxing Prefecture. As soon as he entered the house, a plump figure rushed over, grabbing Chen Fei's hand and exclaiming, Young Master Chen, Big Brother Chen, I'm joining you this time. Chen Fei looked closely and recognized the plump figure before him as Han Xian, the young prince. He couldn't help but be taken aback. What are you doing here? Han Xian shook his head. I don't know either. I was about to go home. But then Uncle Han told me that the Lord wanted me to stay and accompany you, Big Brother Chen, to the capital. Beside them, Han Ju spoke up to explain, Young Master Chen, this is a last-minute arrangement by the Lord. He said the young prince is your friend, so he included him in the enrollment list for Tianqing Academy. Now understanding, Chen Fei nodded. Got it. Then let's set off. The chubby youngster hurriedly caught up, Big Brother Chen, I'm coming with you. The three boarded the ship and set off towards the capital city. The vessel provided by the master of the prefecture was certainly no ordinary boat. Designed with special enchantments and powered by spirit stones as fuel, its speed was nearly seven to eight times faster than that of regular ships. At this speed, reaching the capital city would only take about a day. The ship was luxuriously decorated with all kinds of amenities, accompanied even by beautiful women, making for a lively atmosphere. However, Chen Fei had no interest in enjoying these comforts. Instead, he meditated to consolidate the progress he had made during his time in the sacred place. 
Chen Fei's spiritual soul and Si had both significantly strengthened. Just in terms of these two aspects, Chen Fei was even stronger than some renowned experts who controlled their realm, albeit there was still a gap in realm. After a day of meditation, the ship arrived at the capital city. Stepping off the ship and looking around, Chen Fei found himself facing a vast and bustling island. According to Han Zhu's introduction, the entire island was a city, namely Daxing Island. The island's overall terrain was high in the middle and low around the edges. In the center of the island stood a towering round tower. The tower was larger at the bottom and smaller at the top, with layers stacked up, and its highest, ninth floor almost piercing the clouds. Looking up, it was truly awe-inspiring and filled with reverence. Han Zhu continued to explain, that Round Tower is the residence of the prefecture master, called Daxing Tower, which is the core of our capital city, and even the entire Daxing prefecture. The prefecture master, along with relatives and skilled individuals gathered within the prefecture, resides in Daxing Tower. Ordinary people do not have the right to enter Daxing Tower. This time, the prefecture master made a special exception and opened the sixth floor of Daxing Tower to host young Master Chen. As he spoke, Han Zhu couldn't help but lift his head, his tone becoming impassioned. Chen Fei nodded slightly, not deeply moved by these words. Beside him, Han Xian wore a look of surprise and whispered to Chen Fei, Big Brother Chen, you're amazing. The prefecture master really values you. The sixth floor, is it very prestigious? Chen Fei asked, puzzled. Han Xian nodded repeatedly, explaining with both hands and mouth, the higher you go in the prefecture master's Daxing Tower, the more prestigious it is. Hosting prefecture masters from other major prefectures occurs on the seventh floor. Occasionally, one or two special guests, like the Grand Spirit King, are hosted on the eighth floor. Major figures such as deputy prefecture masters and elders of major families are usually hosted on the fifth or sixth floors. Big Brother Chen, you are currently only formally recognized as a junior prefecture master without an official position. Yet, Prefecture Master Han is hosting you on the sixth floor, indicating that in his eyes, your status is higher than that of ordinary deputy prefecture masters or senior elders. Moreover, I heard that some time ago, the Prefecture Master hosted a deputy prefecture master from the Dashi Prefecture on the fifth floor. So, this clearly shows how much the Prefecture Master values you. After listening, Chen Fei understood but still didn't show much reaction. He casually asked, then isn't there also a ninth floor? What kind of VIP would that be reserved for? Han Xian shook his head, the ninth floor isn't used. It's the prefecture master's private place and is never open to guests of any status. Only the prefecture master's intimate associates or those trusted by him would be invited to the ninth floor. Since prefecture master Han moved into Daxing Tower, no one knows who has ever entered the ninth floor. I see. Chen Fei nodded again. Afterward, the three boarded a specially arranged vehicle at the pier and headed straight for Daxing Tower. Chapter 3732 after an incense stick's time, they arrived at the base of Daxing Tower. Standing nearby now, when Chen Fei raised his head to look at the towering Daxing Tower, its magnificence became even more apparent. The immense base of the tower made the first floor look like a ring of city walls, keeping those without sufficient status outside. Han Zhu arrived at an arched entrance, verified their identities, and led Chen Fei and Han Xian inside the tower. The first thing that caught their eyes was a vast and spacious hall, resembling a grand auditorium. In the center of the hall hung a huge banner that read, Warmly welcome the arrival of Master Chen Fei, Junior Prefecture Master of Daiming Prefecture. Then, on both sides of the hall, two rows of service personnel stood impeccably. As Chen Fei arrived, both rows shouted in unison, Welcome, Junior Prefecture Master Chen Fei. Then, they all bowed deeply in unison. This scene was so familiar that Chen Fei was momentarily dazed, almost feeling like he had returned to Earth's Huaxia. After standing still for a few seconds, Chen Fei came to his senses and couldn't help but say to Han Zhu, This is really unnecessary, isn't it? Han Zhu chuckled, Master Chen, these arrangements were personally made by the prefecture master to show his welcome and respect for you. Master Chen, shall we go upstairs? Immediately, Han Zhu led Chen Fei to the side of the hall and proceeded upwards. Can't we go directly to the sixth floor? Chen Fei felt a bit strange. After all, Daxing Tower was quite tall, the sixth floor was at least a hundred meters high in the sky. Did they really have to climb floor by floor? Han Zhu smiled, the prefecture master instructed that members of our Daxing prefecture should appreciate the magnificence of junior prefecture master's demeanor. Oh, I see. Chen Fei felt that this arrangement was a bit odd. Nevertheless, he followed Han Zhu and ascended the stairs, heading towards the second floor. Upon entering the second floor, they found another grand hall with many people inside. However, judging from their attire and aura, these individuals seemed to hold higher positions than those on the first floor. Similarly, the second floor also had a welcome banner and slogans. Han Zhu continued to smile and led Chen Fei to the third floor. The same reception routine was repeated, making Chen Fei feel somewhat awkward. He could only manage a vague smile. Next, they went to the fourth and fifth floors, encountering the same setup. However, there were fewer people inside compared to the lower floors, and the decoration in the halls was more luxurious. 
After passing through each floor, they finally arrived at the sixth floor. This time, there were no welcome banners or exaggerated slogans. Han Ju led Chen Fei to a luxurious wooden door and lightly knocked. Prefecture Master, Master Chen has arrived. I know, came Han Jingchuan's voice from inside the room. Han Ju immediately bowed and stepped back, then turned and left. Footsteps sounded, the door opened, and Han Jingchuan appeared before Chen Fei with a smile. Welcome, Master Chen, please come in. Chen Fei entered the room, where Han Jingchuan invited him to sit down and personally brought a cup of tea. You must have had a challenging journey. How are you feeling? Chen Fei looked at Han Jingchuan, who was smiling, and sensed that he might have other intentions, but there were no clear clues. In the end, he decided to be honest, Master Han, your hospitality is very thoughtful. However, the welcoming ceremonies from the base of the tower all the way up were a bit too lively. Ha ha ha. Han Jingchuan laughed heartily and said, I heard you come from Earth Swashia, so I specially arranged for relevant personnel to learn their customs. It seems you're not very fond of it. My mistake. Um, sorry to trouble you with the festivities, I was just a bit surprised, Chen Fei said, then added seriously, Master Han, what plans do you have next? I will fully cooperate. Han Jingchuan replied, there's nothing special planned, just wanted you to exchange pointers with the young cultivators of our Daxing prefecture. These youngsters usually stay within the prefecture, accustomed to being praised and perhaps a bit arrogant. Since you're here as junior prefecture master, I thought it would be good for you to spar with them and let them see the prowess of experts from other great prefectures. Chen Fei politely said, not so much sparring as exchanging and learning together. With your assurance, I feel relieved, Han Jingchuan said. I've scheduled the exchange for tomorrow. Master Chen, you've had a long journey. I won't delay you further. I've prepared a room for you, please rest early. Upon hearing this, Chen Fei stood up promptly, thank you for the arrangements, Master Han. I'll take my leave. Leaving the room, Han Ju approached and settled Chen Fei and Han Xian in the VIP reception room on the sixth floor. It must be said that this was indeed a reception room befitting a vice prefect level guest, with various items inside that were treasures. Even highly valuable spirit stones from outside were supplied limitlessly as casual items. Han Xian, though a young prince, had never stayed in such a high-level room before. He was excitedly exploring everywhere in the room and even stuffed several spirit stones into his pockets. Sitting on the soft large bed, Chen Fei thought about today's reception. Han Jingchuan had given him quite a lot of face, arranging numerous ceremonies along the way and personally receiving him, showing abundant respect. However, Chen Fei couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Han Jingchuan, as the master of a prefecture and a top expert in the local realm, had gone to great lengths with these arrangements just to receive him. Yet, the reception had only consisted of a few polite words. This made Chen Fei feel it was somewhat wasteful and entirely unnecessary. If it was just about arranging a sparring session, Han Jingchuan could have easily sent a message through someone else. Why all the grand gestures? It definitely doesn't feel right. I wonder what that old fox has planned. Chen Fei muttered to himself, feeling puzzled but unable to grasp any clues. He decided to start meditating right away. Over the night, the next morning after a hearty breakfast, Chen Fei and Han Xian left their room. Han Ju led them to the hall, where they saw Han Jingchuan already standing there with a smile. You're here. Let's go together. Han Jingchuan invited them warmly. Han Xian was suddenly both excited and nervous, his chubby body swaying left and right like a giant bug. Chen Fei felt even more puzzled, the illustrious prefecture master, waiting specifically for us early in the morning, this. The group arrived at a place resembling an elevator. They entered it and quickly descended to the first floor. There's an elevator here. Why wasn't it used yesterday? Chen Fei couldn't help but complain silently. As the elevator doors opened, Chen Fei saw a group of people waiting outside. On the outermost layer stood a group of middle-aged men and women dressed in luxurious attire, exuding a powerful aura, obviously not ordinary people. Behind these middle-aged men and women were a group of young men and women who appeared to be in their twenties, similarly dressed in splendid attire. Chapter 3733 When this group saw Han Jingchuan, they slightly bowed and greeted with smiles. Greetings, Prefecture Master. Seeing this, Han Jingchuan chuckled, no need to be so formal. Now that everyone is here, that's perfect. The junior prefecture master of Daiming Prefecture, Chen Fei, is also here. Let's get to know each other beforehand, Han Jingchuan said, pointing towards Chen Fei. Instantly, all eyes turned towards Chen Fei. Indeed, he is the junior prefecture master of Daiming Prefecture. Truly a talented individual. A middle-aged man with a square face laughed and remarked before glancing behind him. Following this, the group of young men and women took the initiative to approach. Are you Chen Fei? I'm Zhou Ku, the young master of the Zhou family in Daxing Prefecture. I'm Yu Yifan from the Yu family in Daxing Prefecture. I'm Yan Hong. Several people introduced themselves briefly or at length, but uniformly, between their brows and eyes, there was a hint of pride and curiosity. 
Although Chen Fei wasn't familiar with the major clans and powers in Daxing Prefecture, he immediately understood from their demeanor that these young masters and misses were obviously extraordinary individuals. Chen Fei nodded politely in response, revealing a courteous smile, Hello everyone, I am Chen Fei. At this moment, Han Jingchuan beckoned a young man and woman over, pointing at Chen Fei, Here is the junior prefecture master of Daiming Prefecture, whom you've been eager to meet. Upon hearing this, the two approached Chen Fei and sized him up. The young man smiled and introduced himself, Hello, I'm Han Huai. The woman, with a critical gaze, scanned Chen Fei from head to toe before uttering two words, Han Yu. Seeing this situation, Chen Fei immediately understood that these two were probably the talented juniors of Han Jingchuan's clan. He nodded again in acknowledgement, returning the gesture. At this moment, a middle-aged man spoke up, now that everyone is here and acquainted, let's not delay any longer. Let's prepare to begin. Everyone nodded and headed towards the martial arts training ground. Just then, a voice called out, wait for me. Everyone turned to see Han Xian raising his hand and speaking softly. This is. Many furrowed their brows, clearly not recognizing Han Xian. Han Xian took the initiative to introduce himself, I'm Han Xian, the grandson of Han Ziyuan from the West Sea Royal Palace. Upon hearing this, some had a faint impression, but that was about it. After all, in their eyes, the so-called West Sea King wasn't much. Being the grandson of the West Sea King made it even less noteworthy. Therefore, the group said nothing and simply turned and headed towards the martial arts training ground. Seeing this, everyone followed suit. Observing from behind, Chen Fei gradually noticed a pattern. Zhou Ku, Yu Yifun, and Yen Hong, these juniors from external families, walked closely together, chatting and laughing, while Han Huai and Han Yu, the young masters from Han Jingxuan's family, maintained some distance from them. Although Han Huai and Han Yu walked together, their interaction was minimal, suggesting an average relationship. As for Han Xian, he should have been with Han Huai and Han Yu, but in this situation, he clearly didn't fit in and could only stay close to Chen Fei. The martial arts training ground was not within the Daxing Tower, so everyone had to walk a distance. Along the way, the various small groups whispered to each other and occasionally glanced towards Chen Fei's direction. Chen Fei didn't deliberately eavesdrop, but with his powerful spiritual sense, he effortlessly caught snippets of their conversations. Is that the junior prefecture master of Daiming Prefecture? Doesn't seem that special to me. Don't underestimate him. The prefecture master has shown him great respect, personally receiving him on the sixth floor of the Daxing Tower. Have any of you ever enjoyed such treatment? I, that doesn't prove anything. Exactly. Just a commoner from a small world. How impressive could he be? Careful what you say. Don't forget, our prefecture master also came from a small world. I misspoke. But not just anyone can compare to the prefecture master. That guy, his arrogant demeanor doesn't sit well with me. When we get to the martial arts arena later, I'll teach him a lesson. On the other side, it seemed like Han Huai and Han Yu were talking. Xiao Yu, you were a bit rude to young master Chen just now. The prefecture master said we should get along well with young master Chen. Humph, he's just a lucky commoner who crawled up. What status does he have to interact with me? Xiao Yu, I've inquired about this Chen Fei. He didn't rely on luck to rise, and his strength is quite remarkable. It's not. Enough, enough, stop exaggerating. Whether he's formidable or not, we'll see when he steps onto the stage. At this moment, Chen Fei understood yesterday's doubts. He looked towards Han Jingchuan, casting him a different kind of glance. Han Jingchuan smiled faintly in response, offering an encouraging look. Seeing this, Chen Fei could only shrug helplessly, accepting the situation. With just that scene, he understood why Han Jingchuan had orchestrated such an elaborate reception yesterday. It seemed that Han Jingchuan not only wanted him to exchange pointers with the young talents of Daxing Prefecture but also aimed to use this opportunity to test the established families of Daxing Prefecture. After all, on the way here, Chen Fei had also heard about the situation in Daxing Prefecture. Han Jingchuan's status in Daxing Prefecture wasn't secure because he was born in a small world. This recent incident with the Gu family was a case in point. It appeared he had been cleverly manipulated by Han Jingchuan into playing the role of a deterrent. Thinking of this, Chen Fei couldn't help but sigh. This made Han Xian nervous. He couldn't help but ask, Brother Chen, what's wrong? Worried you won't win? How about we go talk to the prefecture master and suggest we just exchange pointers instead of competing? Chen Fei patted the chubby Han Xian on the shoulder, saying, It's fine, I'm not nervous. What about you? Are you ready for your match later? At this, Han Xian's chubby face instantly fell. Brother Chen, I specifically told the prefecture master yesterday that I didn't want to participate. But he insisted, saying it's a chance for difficult training. Brother Chen, I don't want to get hurt. Please help me out later. Seeing this, Chen Fei chuckled and reassured Han Xian, don't worry, I won't let anything serious happen to you. Thank you. Han Xian hurriedly expressed his gratitude, but then his expression turned somewhat peculiar. If nothing serious happens, does that mean something minor? At that moment, a bell rang, followed by a wave of enthusiastic cheers, rushing in like a hot wave. 
Chen Fei and Han Xian looked up to see a tall circular structure ahead, somewhat resembling the ancient Roman Colosseum on Earth. As they entered, a roaring cheer erupted, as if a torrent of heat, making Chen Fei feel as though his blood was about to boil. In the center stood a round arena, surrounded by various formations painted on the ground. A presenter ascended the platform and announced loudly, Today, Junior Prefecture Master Chen Fei of Daiming Prefecture will spar with the geniuses of our Daxing Prefecture. The match is about to begin. The presenter then proceeded to introduce the participants. For Chen Fei, they only mentioned his identity, along with his relationship with Tian Ming and Xia Ming Lei, and nothing more. In contrast, the introductions for the geniuses of Daxing Prefecture were extensive, with detailed accounts of various information, even recounting details of critical battles from decades ago. With each introduction, the audience erupted into fervent cheers. Chen Fei also noticed that the loudest cheers were for Han Huai and Yu Yifun. In fact, Yu Yifun's cheers seemed even louder than Han Huai's. It seems that this Yu Yifun and his Yu family are the ones Han Jingchuan is most concerned about, Chen Fei thought to himself. At this moment, the presenter reached the final introduction, which was Han Xian. However, the atmosphere became quiet, with almost no cheers. Instead, there were whispers and discussions about who exactly Han Xian was. Even though Han Xian had a thick-skinned chubby face, this scene still made him feel somewhat embarrassed, his expression unavoidably turning solemn. Chapter 3734 After introducing all the participants, the staff proceeded to explain the rules of the competition. Generally, it was meant for mutual exchange and learning, with the emphasis on friendly sparring. Once the explanation was done, the competition officially began. As the main target for exchange and learning, Chen Fei stepped onto the stage first. He surveyed the others across from him and asked, who's going to come up first? The others glanced at each other, seeming undecided for a moment. Seeing this, Chen Fei added calmly, if you want to come up together, that's fine too. Upon hearing this, the faces of the several young geniuses opposite him instantly darkened, their expressions turning ugly. The surrounding audience erupted into discussion, mostly in criticism of Chen Fei. Even in the VIP seats, several magnificently dressed big shots couldn't help but speak out. This junior prefecture master of Daiming Prefecture is quite interesting. He's just like Tian Ming in character, no wonder there's been tension between Daiming Prefecture and the surrounding major prefectures. Both generations share this character trait. The person who said the last sentence was Yu Filiu, the head of the Yu family. After he finished speaking, he deliberately glanced at Han Jingchuan. Clearly, his words held deeper meaning. Han Jingchuan smiled faintly in response and calmly said, relationships are maintained through strength. Without strength, even the best relationships are just empty talk. Upon hearing this, Yu Filiu lightly furrowed his brow and seemed about to say more. However, Han Jingchuan waved his hand, interrupting him. Old Yu, let's watch the match. Someone's about to step onto the stage. At this, everyone in the VIP seats turned their attention back to the arena. At that moment, standing opposite Chen Fei was the young master of the Zhou family, Zhou Ku. I am Zhou Ku. Today, I'm here to learn from the junior prefecture master of Daiming Prefecture's strength. Zhou Ku bowed respectfully. Then, he took a step forward, and his aura surged out instantly like a raging wave, surrounding Chen Fei. Chen Fei remained still, feeling Zhou Ku's attack. Not bad, this momentum. As he spoke, Chen Fei raised his right hand and lightly slapped. Smack. With a loud bang, the surging qi from Zhou Ku, like a tidal wave crashing towards Chen Fei, was directly shattered by this palm, transforming into a gust of wind that dispersed in all directions. Zhou Ku obviously hadn't expected this outcome. He staggered, his throat sweetened, and he spat out a mouthful of blood, clearly suffering internal injuries from the backlash. Seeing this, Chen Fei spoke up, young master Zhou, I yield. But before he could finish his sentence, Zhou Ku's expression changed, gritting his teeth as he launched another attack. I haven't lost yet. Seeing this, Chen Fei sighed softly, shook his head, and then raised his right hand into the air. He slapped out a palm. Originally, he had intended to prioritize mutual exchange and learning out of respect for Han Prefecture Master, hoping to make the opponent retreat with difficulty. However, he hadn't expected Zhou Ku to become angry and launch a fierce attack himself. Since that was the case, Chen Fei naturally wouldn't hold back. Flame Shark Zhou Ku roared angrily, condensing his qi into a flaming shark that surged towards Chen Fei. However, this ferocious shark, when it met Chen Fei's palm, was easily dissipated with just a light pat, completely devoid of any power. Zhou Ku's body was thrown back by the backlash force, spraying blood as he flew off the stage. I yield. Chen Fei saluted with clasped fists. Zhou Ku crashed to the ground, blood at his lips, his face contorted with anger as he glared fiercely at Chen Fei. The audience fell into a stunned silence, seemingly frozen in disbelief at the unexpected outcome. Zhou Ku was undeniably one of the top talents of Daxing Prefecture, the foremost among the younger generation of the Zhou family, with the cultivation realm reaching the fifth stage of the elemental embryo realm, truly a formidable expert. Yet, Chen Fei managed to dispel his attack with just two palm strikes. 
the disparity seemed overwhelmingly large. Not only the ordinary spectators but even the dignitaries in the VIP seats were momentarily dumbfounded. The head of the Zhou family, unable to keep up appearances, could only find an excuse. Zhou Ku is usually lazy and didn't fully exert himself on the stage. Others naturally understood the situation but refrained from exposing it. Zhou Ku was assisted off stage for treatment, and the competition continued. The remaining young genius's expressions were noticeably less relaxed than before. They exchanged glances and spoke in hushed tones. We underestimated that guy. We need to be serious from now on. His cultivation should be at the sixth stage of the elemental embryo realm, possibly nearing the seventh. We need to be careful. After some discussion, a woman named Yen Hong stepped forward and ascended the stage. Yen Hong requests guidance from Master Chen. After bowing, Yen Hong immediately went on guard, maintaining distance from Chen Fei and continuously launching luminous dart attacks from afar. Each time Chen Fei tried to close the distance, Yen Hong swiftly evaded with her agile body techniques. For a while, it seemed like she had gained the upper hand, suppressing Chen Fei to the point where he couldn't retaliate. At this moment of silence, they had already figured out her strategy. Yen Hong's strength was at most on par with Zhou Ke's. Learning from the previous lesson, she was more cautious in her approach. Coupled with her agility, she aimed to wear down Chen Fei bit by bit. The strategy was sound against ordinary opponents. But against Chen Fei, it was futile. Although Yan Hong's movements were agile and her attacks swift, they lacked significant power, even less effective than Zhou Ke's. Facing such an attack, Chen Fei didn't even bother to dodge. He relied solely on his physical resilience from the twin divine physique. Suddenly, Chen Fei advanced directly into Yan Hong's assault, stepping forward abruptly and reaching out with his right hand. Yan Hong was clearly caught off guard by Chen Fei's move. Startled, she hesitated for a moment, her movement slowing down. In that brief moment, Chen Fei's large hand reached Yan Hong's wrist, and he threw her off the stage with a single motion. I yield. Chen Fei saluted once again. Yan Hong, somewhat embarrassed, managed to stabilize herself upon landing, looking at Chen Fei with a complex expression. The others present now regarded Chen Fei with even greater seriousness. Yu Yifun, Han Huai, and Han Yu, the only three who hadn't yet competed, exchanged glances. Eventually, Han Huai took the initiative to speak up. It seems that Master Chen's strength has exceeded our expectations. Allow me to go first. With these words, Han Huai ascended the stage, smiling faintly. He bowed to Chen Fei and said, I am Han Huai. Please instruct me, Junior Prefecture Master of Daiming Prefecture. Since courtesy was extended, Chen Fei reciprocated with a bow and said, Chen Fei, please instruct me. Chapter 3735 As soon as Han Huai made his move, his entire body's chi reacted, swiftly closing the distance to engage Chen Fei in close combat. Clearly, after witnessing Yan Hong's failure earlier, Han Huai realized that trying to defeat Chen Fei through long-range tactics was unlikely. Therefore, hand-to-hand -hand combat might be a better choice. Watching Han Huai charge towards him, Chen Fei felt somewhat surprised for a moment, then shook his head with a smile. It seems they've misunderstood. By now, Han Huai had reached Chen Fei's side, gathering his qi into his fist, his strength erupting as he launched a punch. Sensing Han Huai's momentum, Chen Fei nodded slightly. Han Huai's cultivation was almost at the seventh stage of the elemental embryo realm, considerably stronger than Zhou Ku and Yan Hong just now. Unfortunately for him, he encountered Chen Fei and, even more unfortunately, chose to engage in close combat. What followed left Han Huai dumbfounded. Faced with his fierce punch, Chen Fei didn't dodge at all, simply meeting it head-on with his body. When Han Huai's fist made contact with Chen Fei's body, he felt as though he had struck a wall. No matter how hard he tried, his fist couldn't advance an inch. In that moment, he felt like he had collided with a mountain, utterly unable to budge it. At this point, Chen Fei looked down at Han Huai and said, Now, it's my turn. With that, Chen Fei threw a punch. Bang! Without a doubt, Han Huai was directly hit, his entire body flying backwards, spitting out blood as he crashed to the ground. This scene instantly stirred up the audience, nearly everyone standing up in shock. Even the dignitaries in the VIP seats had their expressions changed drastically, filled with disbelief. What's going on? Han Huai lost. Just one punch, how could this happen? Could it be that the junior prefecture master is this powerful? For a while, various discussions erupted all around. The young geniuses standing opposite Chen Fei had even more drastic changes in their expressions. Han Yu, who had previously underestimated Chen Fei, now had a darkened expression. She muttered to herself, how could this happen? This. Yu Yifun also wore a serious expression, staring at Chen Fei for several seconds. Then, as if realizing something, he suddenly smirked, showing a hint of a smile. He he. Seeing this, Han Yu turned to ask, Yifun, what are you laughing about? Yu Yifun narrowed his eyes slightly and confidently explained, can't you see, little Yu? Look at your brother Han Huai, sent flying with a punch, spitting blood. 
It looks serious, but in reality, it's just a minor injury, nothing more than a scratch. Upon hearing this, Han Yu immediately turned to look in Han Huai's direction. She saw that Han Huai had indeed gotten up on his own, wiping away the blood from his mouth, not needing any assistance. My brother is fine, but what about just now? Han Yu began, then suddenly realized something, her eyes widening in shock as she exclaimed, could it be that my brother was throwing the match? No way. Yu Yifan said, why wouldn't it be? Xiaoya, think about it again. Since this junior prefecture master arrived in our Daxing prefecture, the prefect lord has given him exceptional hospitality, even arranging special competitions with us. It seems everything is designed to boost this junior prefecture master's reputation. Since it's about boosting his reputation, some things are self-evident. After hearing this, Han Yu pondered quietly. She felt increasingly convinced and couldn't help muttering, when they met earlier, my brother smiled and greeted him proactively, even asking me to be kinder to Chen Fei. Could it be that the prefect lord said something to him beforehand, so my brother? Yu Yifan nodded. There's no doubt, that's the most plausible explanation. Brother Han is really overdoing it. As a distinguished son of the prefecture, being defeated by an outsider with just one punch, even faster than Zhou Ke's defeat, it's giving face to the other side but completely humiliating our Daxing prefecture. Upon hearing this, Han Yu immediately encouraged herself, Yifan, you must expose that guy. Fight well and earn back our Daxing prefecture's dignity. Yu Yifan crossed his arms, nodded slightly, and murmured to himself, the Han family may not care about face, but my Yu family does. Meanwhile, in the VIP stands, after a brief moment of surprise, the dignitaries looked at each other, seemingly aware of something. Yu Filiu narrowed his eyes, glanced at Han Jingchuan, and remarked, this junior prefecture master of the Daiming prefecture is truly valued by Han prefect. Obviously, this Yu family head and his son were on the same page. Han Jingchuan smiled faintly and nodded. This Chen Fei is indeed outstanding. I see the future of the Daiming prefecture depends on him. Is that so? Yu Filiu chuckled lightly and said no more. At this moment, Yu Yifan, with a confident smile on his face, stepped onto the platform and looked at Chen Fei across from him, saying, Yu Yifan, please enlighten me. Chen Fei responded promptly, Chen Fei, please enlighten me. As they spoke, Yu Yifan moved, condensing qi into both hands and sending out blades of qi towards Chen Fei. At the same time, he used soul transmission, Chen Fei, Han Huai was just acting with you earlier. I won't go easy on you. Hearing this, Chen Fei couldn't help but pause. Acting? What do you mean? He he, still not admitting it? Let's see how long you can keep up this pretense. Yu Yifan chuckled again through soul transmission, simultaneously intensifying his assault with even more ferocity from both hands. This time, Chen Fei understood. Han Hui's defeat had come too swiftly. This group of people thought he had been acting in coordination with Chen Fei. Thinking of this, Chen Fei couldn't help but smile wryly, shaking his head. He said to Yu Yifan, then let's fight. I want to see how capable you really are. Humph, arrogant fool. Yu Yifan roared, and a huge shadow of a whale surged up from behind him, covering half the sky. Its gaping mouth opened wide, charging straight towards Chen Fei. Whale elemental seal, Chen Fei's mind stirred. This form seemed somewhat familiar, resembling the whale carcass he had seen in the human and sacred land. However, Chen Fei didn't dwell on it further. Facing Yu Yifan's attack, Chen Fei drew the Nine Extreme Sword and infused it with fire intent. Instantly, the originally black Nine Extreme Sword suddenly turned entirely crimson, as if engulfed in flames. Beneath the blue whale shadow, it appeared exceptionally dazzling. Fight! Yu Yifan waved his hand, and the huge whale elemental seal ejected a surge of blue elemental qi like seawater, sweeping towards Chen Fei. At that moment, Chen Fei seemed to feel the environment around him transform into a vast ocean, struggling to breathe. However, Chen Fei quickly adjusted. Facing the massive creature descending from above, he held the sword in his right hand and slashed down. A long line of crimson flames cut through the air, colliding head-on with the gigantic blue whale shadow. Chapter 3736 At that moment, almost everyone's gaze in the venue turned towards the sky, watching those two beams of light. When the immense whale shadow collided with Chen Fei's crimson sword light, the collision that everyone anticipated did not occur. Yu Yifan's whale shadow, under Chen Fei's sword light, was directly slashed apart, cleaved in two, rapidly fracturing and dissipating into countless fine strands of qi that burst in the air. This outcome stunned everyone. No one had expected that Yu Yifan's desperate strike using his elemental seal would be directly cleaved through by Chen Fei with a single sword. It wasn't a match of equals as anticipated, it was a complete and thorough domination. How could this be? Is young master Yu going to lose too? Could it be that young master Yu, like Han Huai? Wasn't it said earlier that young master Han was acting? Could it be the same for young master Yu? Amidst the astonished discussions, after Chen Fei's sword light cleaved through the whale shadow, it did not stop but continued forward, slashing towards Yu Yifan. Yu Yifan, who moments ago was filled with confidence, had thought his use of the elemental seal would guarantee victory. 
However, he hadn't expected to be shattered by a single sword strike. At this moment, he stood frozen in disbelief. Only when the sword light reached him did he snap out of it, hurriedly mobilizing his chi to defend. But his movements were a fraction too slow. The sword light slashed down on Yu Yifun. It tore through the chi he hastily summoned, leaving a long bloodied gash on him, splattering blood into the air. Yu Yifun screamed in agony, collapsing on the arena platform in a sorry state. One sword strike defeated Yu Yifun. Seeing this, Chen Fei withdrew his sword light and looked at Yu Yifun calmly. You fought well. Afterwards, he turned his gaze towards Han Yu, without saying a word but clearly implying, your turn, ready? Upon meeting Chen Fei's gaze, Han Yu blinked, quickly stepping back a few paces and avoiding eye contact. Her strength was similar to Zhou Ku and Yen Hong, perhaps even slightly inferior. Compared to Han Huai and Yu Yifun, she was far behind and dared not step onto the stage to compete with Chen Fei. Seeing this, Chen Fei smiled faintly, turned his head to the staff on the other side, gesturing that the match could end. However, at that moment, Chen Fei suddenly felt a powerful gust of wind rushing towards his chest. The wind howled with a chilling intent. Without waiting to turn around, Chen Fei immediately condensed his qi, gathering it at his chest. Bang! The gust of wind collided with the qi at Chen Fei's chest, compressing against each other before exploding apart. The scattered qi shredded Chen Fei's clothes, but the remaining force scattered against his skin. Yet, it seemed to shatter upon impact, unable to harm Chen Fei in the slightest. Blocking this blow, Chen Fei turned around to face the direction from which the attack came. Without a doubt, the one who attacked was none other than Yu Yifun, who had been knocked down by Chen Fei's sword just moments ago. His eyes were bloodshot, his face filled with resentment, blood at the corner of his mouth, pointing his right hand towards Chen Fei, his expression tinged with surprise. Clearly, he was astonished by the failure of his sneak attack. Seeing this, Chen Fei's expression darkened. The reason he agreed to this exchange was to give face to Han Prefect. Despite the mocking remarks from these young lords and ladies along the way, Chen Fei had not let it affect him. Even during the exchange, he had only intended to defeat his opponents and stop, even deliberately holding back to avoid seriously injuring them. The same applied to Yu Yifun. Just now, that sword strike seemed severe, with blood splattering, but in reality, it was just a flesh wound. For someone like Yu Yifun, a seventh layer elemental realm expert, he could recover with just a few days of rest, having almost no impact. However, Yu Yifun was unwilling to lose face. Seizing the opportunity, he attempted to assassinate Chen Fei, even aiming for his heart. This goes beyond what can be explained as a mere friendly exchange. Since the opponent had murderous intent, Chen Fei, even with his good temperament, wouldn't hold back. He snorted coldly and waved his right hand into the air. A burst of qi shot out, speeding towards Yu Yifun. Yu Yifun was still dazed from his failed sneak attack. Seeing Chen Fei attack again, he was shocked and didn't have time to dodge. Whoosh! The qi whistled through, directly severing Yu Yifun's right arm. His forearm flew up, blood spraying. Yu Yifun let out a painful cry, his face full of horror, hastily retreating. Meanwhile, Chen Fei didn't stop. The sword qi in his hand continued to whistle, preparing to strike again. This stunned everyone, their faces filled with shock and disbelief. Yu Filiu in the VIP stand had a large change in his expression. No longer sitting still, he dashed down from the platform, glaring angrily at Chen Fei, striking out with a palm. How dare you! Facing the charging Euphelio, Chen Fei remained unflustered. His nine extreme sword continued unabated, slashing forward. You, seeking death. Seeing this, Euphelio was truly furious. His eyes widened in rage, he roared and simultaneously changed his hand direction, grabbing towards Chen Fei's nine extreme sword. Clang. A sound of metal and iron clashing rang out. A gust of fierce wind swept by as Chen Fei slashed with the nine extreme sword. Euphelio raised his hand to look and found a deep gash had appeared on his palm, nearly severing it. Now, he was truly enraged. After all, Euphelio was a top figure in Daxing Prefecture, arguably the second only to Han Jingchuan, a high-level expert in the seventh layer controlling realm. Yet this young man dared to lay hands on him and left a scar on his hand. Although this injury meant little to Euphelio, this act was a profound insult to his Yu family. Euphelio erupted in fury, his terrifying aura of the controlling realm surging towards Chen Fei, roaring with murderous intent. I'm going to kill you. Chen Fei held his breath and focused his mind, almost immediately mobilizing all his elemental qi to resist Euphelio's pressure. He also wanted to know where his current strength stood, whether he could withstand the assault of a controlling realm expert of what level. Gritting his teeth, Chen Fei struggled to hold on. But Euphelio's pressure grew stronger and stronger. Chen Fei felt his body trembling, his elemental qi fracturing layer by layer, seemingly unable to withstand it. Just as Euphelio seemed about to break through Chen Fei's defense, at this critical moment, Han Jingchuan flew out from the VIP stand, standing in front of Chen Fei. With a gentle palm, he blocked Euphelio's attack. Han Jingchuan, you. Euphelio was furious, staring at Han Jingchuan and calling out his name. 
Han Jingchuan remained composed, his voice calm yet stern, Yu Filiu, you need to understand what you're doing. Gritting his teeth, Yu Filiu said, that brat has guts, actually attempting to kill my son. Therefore, I must kill him. At this moment, Chen Fei chuckled mockingly, taunting, oh, so now you want to kill me? It seems the head of the Yu family is getting old, his eyesight isn't what it used to be. I retaliate after being attacked, and the head of the Yu family says I'm trying to kill him. Yet when Yu Yifun initiated the sneak attack, the head of the Yu family conveniently looked away. Heh, what a display of righteousness. Chapter 3737 Chen Fei's words were forceful and resounding. As soon as these words were spoken, the audience couldn't help but whisper and discuss among themselves. However, Yu Filiu was, after all, a figure of high status. Even if Chen Fei had a point, what did it matter? In his view, even if his son had launched a sneak attack, or even if he had truly killed this commoner from the small world, it was no big deal. Therefore, Yu Filiu didn't argue further. He simply glared fiercely at Chen Fei and sternly said, you're just making trouble. Regardless, you must give an account for injuring my son today. Chen Fei replied coldly, an account? What kind of account do you want? At this moment, Han Jingchuan beside him looked solemn, staring at Yu Filiu with a serious expression. Seeing this, Yu Filiu's eyes shifted, and he said aloud, considering you are a guest of the Han Manor, I'll spare your life for the Manor Lord's sake. However, I will disable your limbs and destroy your Dantian as punishment. Upon hearing this demand, Chen Fei couldn't help but laugh. Disable my limbs, destroy my Dantian? Ah! Uh. The surrounding audience erupted in murmurs and gestures. Various discussions filled the air. Many people looked at Chen Fei with different expressions, some pitted, some gloated, some called for punishment, all with their own characteristics. Even Zhou Ku, Yen Hong, and Han Yu, who had just been defeated, had their expressions change. There was a hint of excitement in their eyes. Clearly, they were also pleased to see Chen Fei in trouble. Only Han Huai and Han Xian, who had not appeared behind Chen Fei, showed a serious and worried expression. Yu Filiu looked at Chen Fei, who was laughing heartily, and said coldly, What are you laughing at? This punishment is already considered lenient. Lenient. Ah. Uh. Chen Fei laughed again, staring at Yu Filiu and saying, What if I don't agree? Don't agree? Yu Filiu gritted his teeth, his eyes cold with murderous intent. Then don't blame me for being ruthless. After saying that, Yu Filiu looked at Han Jingchuan, exchanging a glance that clearly conveyed his intention. I've given you face as the Manor Lord. If this kid doesn't take it, don't blame me. Han Jingchuan naturally understood, but he still spoke in a solemn tone, Yu Filiu, this matter was caused by Yu Yifan's mistake. I think we should stop here. Stop here. Yu Filiu roared angrily, gritting his teeth. My son is severely injured while he remains unscathed. Manor Lord, are you favoring an outsider? What does this mean? Could it be that the cultivators of Daxing Prefecture are inferior to an outsider? As he said this, Yu Filiu deliberately raised his voice, glancing towards the VIP stands. Many old nobles of Daxing Prefecture, similar in status to Yu Filiu, were seated there. Evidently, Yu Filiu intended to leverage their presence to pressure Han Jingchuan. Han Jingchuan's face grew darker, and he spoke again, Yu Filiu, don't digress. This isn't about favoring anyone. This is a competition on the stage, naturally with winners and losers. If your skills are inferior, then admit defeat gracefully. Sneak attacks and disregarding rules are against the principles of martial arts. Han Jingchuan's words were reasonable, but to Yu Filiu, it seemed like a complete disregard for the face of these great aristocrats. Thus, Yu Filiu's expression became increasingly grim. He glared fiercely at Han Jingchuan and said harshly, anyone who injures my son must pay the price. Clearly, he was not intending to continue arguing, he wanted to act directly. Upon hearing this, Han Jingchuan's face darkened. He coldly warned, Yu Filiu, I've already explained the reasoning. Chen Fei is a guest I invited here. You'd better think this through. With the situation unfolding in front of so many people, Yu Filiu was almost unable to retreat. If that were the case, not only would his son's injury be an issue, but even Yu Filiu, as the head of the Yu family, would thoroughly lose face, causing the Yu family's status in Daxing Prefecture to plummet. Therefore, Yu Filiu insisted, my mind is made up. As he spoke, Yu Filiu reached out with a big hand towards Chen Fei. Seeing this, Chen Fei immediately became alert, swiftly retreating while surging with Qi to resist Yu Filiu's move. The brief confrontation just now had already allowed Chen Fei to feel the strength of a high-level practitioner in the Seven Directions realm. Although Chen Fei was very confident in his own strength and could battle against ordinary experts below the Four Directions realm, facing a high-level practitioner in the Seven Directions realm was still immensely pressuring, even to the point where he sensed the threat of death. Just as Yu Filiu was about to strike, Han Jingchuan roared, and a huge phantom rose behind him, rushing towards Yu Filiu. Yu Filiu, you dare to defy even the Lord's command. At this moment, an overwhelming momentum pressed down, causing everyone to feel suffocated. Even Yu Filiu's expression changed, and he had to stop his attack on Chen Fei, turning to face Han Jingchuan instead. 
Han Jingchuan, how dare you? Han Jingchuan's assault did not stop. You feel you, I respect that your Yu family is a significant figure in Daxing Prefecture, and I've treated you well. Yet, you act recklessly, ignoring the king's orders and attacking the innocent. Such treacherous behavior must be punished. After his stern shout, Han Jingchuan gave a command. Execute the traitor. Following his command, a group of fully armed soldiers emerged around the arena, wielding crossbows aimed directly at Euphelio without hesitation. With elemental chi gathered on specially crafted crossbows, beams of light shot out, accurately targeting Euphelio standing on the platform. Breakthrough crossbows. Euphelio was shocked to see this and attempted to dodge. However, Han Jingchuan's attack descended from above at that moment, slamming directly onto Euphelio's head, forcefully pinning him down on the platform, rendering him immobile. Swish, swish, swish. In an instant, hundreds of arrows struck Euphelio, turning him into something resembling a hedgehog. After the volley of arrows, a group of swordsmen and axemen rushed forward, surrounding and attacking Euphelio. Seeing this, Chen Fei's eyes narrowed. He looked up at Han Jingchuan, realizing something, and quickly retreated from the platform. Euphelio also understood, looking up at Han Jingchuan and gritting his teeth as he shouted, Han Jingchuan, you plotted against me. You want to kill your old officials. You'll die a horrible death. Han Jingchuan ignored him, intensifying the pressure and gesturing again. As a result, another batch of elite guards rushed in, completely surrounding Euphelio, leaving him no escape. Thus, in the midst of the sound of slashing blades, Euphelio, the top expert of the Seven Directions realm, was gruesomely hacked into a pulp right on the arena. At this moment, everyone in the audience and the VIP stands was completely stunned. Some wanted to flee but were surrounded by guards and forced back into their seats, staring in shock at the scene before them. When everything was over, Han Jingchuan raised his head, looked around, and raised his right hand, declaring loudly, the traitor has been executed. Immediately, his soldiers raised their arms and shouted in unison. The traitor has been executed. The traitor has been executed. The traitor has been executed. Chapter 3738 Faced with such a scene, almost everyone was dumbfounded. Not to mention Yu Yifun. He had originally hoped his father would avenge him and give Chen Fei a harsh lesson. Instead, he witnessed his father being ruthlessly hacked to death on the arena. The disparity between this outcome and his expectations was too great. Yu Yifun stood frozen in place, even when the guards came to take him away, he remained bewildered. As for Zhou Ku, Yen Hong, Han Yu, and the others, who had a good relationship with Yu Yifun, they had intended to speak up for him. But now, they were all dumbfounded, trembling with fear and shock. They were all clever individuals and had already realized the significance behind this incident. Each one worried about ending up like Yu Yifun. Fortunately, right after Han Jingchuan executed Euphelio, he immediately announced loudly that this matter was only related to Euphelio alone and had nothing to do with anyone else, instructing everyone to leave. Finally, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Chen Fei and Han Xian prepared to leave together along with the crowd. However, before they could take a step, Han Zhu rushed over and respectfully said, Master Chen, the Lord invites you. Chen Fei paused briefly, then nodded and followed Han Zhu. Han Xian followed closely behind. At the entrance of a luxurious room in the arena, Chen Fei bowed. Han Jingchuan nodded slightly and invited Chen Fei inside to take a seat. Entering the room, Han Jingchuan had a smile on his face and gestured for Chen Fei to sit beside him. Han Huai, sitting next to him, took the initiative to pour wine for Chen Fei. Chen, your performance on the arena today truly opened my eyes. Han Jingchuan raised his wine cup. Chen Fei raised his cup and replied, Thank you for your praise, Lord Han. Han Jingchuan put down his cup and fixed his gaze on Chen Fei, saying, Chen, there are no outsiders here. You don't need to be reserved. Just speak your mind. Chen Fei narrowed his eyes slightly, studying Han Jingchuan for a few seconds, unable to quite grasp the Lord's intentions. Seeing this, Han Jingchuan took out a scroll and handed it to Chen Fei. This is... Chen Fei looked puzzled as he opened the scroll and began to read. But as soon as he read a bit, Chen Fei was stunned. Because the scroll was actually an official document signed by various major families, bearing the seal of a magic formation and bound by a blood oath from the signatories. Such official documents weren't just for show, they were magically enforced, causing harm or even death to those who violated them. Typically, only matters of utmost importance and involving important figures warranted the use of such official documents. Now, faced with such an important official document, Chen Fei was truly astonished. Upon reading the entire document, Chen Fei was thoroughly shocked. Because the signatories of this document were none other than Han Jingchuan, Lord of Daxing Prefecture, and Tian Ming, Lord of Daiming Prefecture. The contents of the document mainly outlined cooperation and exchanges between the two major prefectures, as well as detailed provisions regarding various related rights and interests. In short, this document could be seen as an alliance agreement between Daxing Prefecture and Daiming Prefecture. Lord Han, is this, is this real? For a moment, Chen Fei found it hard to believe. 
After all, since its re-establishment, the situation in Daiming Prefecture had never been good. The surrounding Dachin Prefecture, the Wu Prefecture, and the Song Prefecture were without a doubt clear enemies of Daiming Prefecture. The strongest the Ling Prefecture, needless to say, regarded Daiming Prefecture as a thorn in its side. During the Tianming Uprising, it aimed to rebel against the Daling Prefecture's ancestors. Naturally, Wu Qi regarded Daiming Prefecture as a thorn in its side. As for the other three prefectures, the Sang Prefecture, the Jin Prefecture, and Daxing Prefecture. Because they did not border Daiming Prefecture and had little contact, their relationship was quite neutral. Of course, because of the Ling Prefecture's strong position, in the event of conflict between Daiming Prefecture and the Ling Prefecture, these neutral three prefectures would most likely support the Ling Prefecture. This result was consensual among the upper echelons of Daiming Prefecture. During this visit to Daxing Prefecture, Chen Fei deliberately concealed his identity. One of his major concerns was that Daxing Prefecture might secretly leak information, putting Chen Fei in a dangerous situation. However, the result now was that not only did Daxing Prefecture not oppose Daiming Prefecture, but they had even formed an alliance with them, completely surprising Chen Fei. Han Jingchuan understood Chen Fei's reaction and smiled, saying, Can you tell if Tianming's signature is genuine or fake? Chen Fei looked at the document again and still felt astonished. But, why is this happening? Han Jingchuan smiled faintly, You want to ask why Daxing Prefecture isn't neutral, doesn't lean towards the Ling Prefecture, and instead formed an alliance with Daiming Prefecture? Chen Fei nodded, I'm well aware of the situation in Daiming Prefecture. It's targeted by various prefectures and coveted by the Ling Prefecture. At this moment, forming an alliance with us is a very dangerous move for Daxing Prefecture. I don't understand, Lord Han. Han Jingchuan squinted slightly and said, Actually, the reason is quite simple. I greatly admire Lord Tian Ming. Admire? Chen Fei widened his eyes. Han Jingchuan continued, I know you may find this reason unbelievable. However, when I climbed up from a small world to Daxing Prefecture, I originally thought I had entered heaven. Instead, I found that this place was not heaven at all, but a hell for the lower class. Later on, as my strength grew and my position gradually rose, I also learned some hidden truths. At that time, I learned the truth about the elemental realm and realized that the entire elemental realm was like a blood-sucking parasite clinging to various small worlds. Moreover, this blood-sucking parasite has grown even larger than its original form, causing the small worlds, which are its true forms, to be on the verge of collapse. When I learned this truth at the time, I almost couldn't accept it and immediately thought of rebelling. But this idea was quickly suppressed. Because I knew that with my strength, I couldn't resist the entire elemental realm, let alone resist Daxing Prefecture. Just when I was discouraged, I saw the secret records of Lord Tian Ming's deeds back then. Although he was defeated in that battle, he was called the Devil Tian Ming. But in my opinion, that was indeed a magnificent rebellion. Lord Tian Ming did what I had thought about but didn't dare to do tens of thousands of years ago. We have similar backgrounds and similar ideals. Therefore, since then, I have only admired Lord Tian Ming. However, Lord Tian Ming was dismembered and suppressed, and I couldn't help him. As a result, I learned recently that Lord Tian Ming had escaped confinement and rebuilt Daiming Prefecture, which gave me hope. In fact, what you don't know is that even before Daiming Prefecture was rebuilt, I secretly contacted Lord Tian Ming. During this period, we met several times. Finally, after several discussions, we reached this agreement together. Chapter 3739 After listening to Han Jingchuan's account, Chen Fei was momentarily speechless. He stared at Han Jingchuan for a few seconds, as if trying to discern from his expression whether what had just been said was true or false, or how much of it was true. However, Chen Fei quickly gave up. Based on his own experience and cultivation, it was nearly impossible for him to read anything from Han Jingchuan's face. Regardless of whether Han Jingchuan's words just now were true or false, with the official document signed in blood placed there, Chen Fei chose to believe it. So, Chen Fei looked at Han Jingchuan and said, Lord Han, what do you need me to do? Han Jingchuan shook his head and said, You have already done very well. Done very well. Chen Fei paused for a moment, then realized something. Lord Han, are you talking about the arena competition? Han Jingchuan smiled and nodded, exactly. With this confirmation, various speculations and doubts in Chen Fei's mind suddenly connected. You deliberately made a grand and over-the-top reception to provoke dissatisfaction among those geniuses like Yu Yifun, paving the way for the upcoming arena competition. In fact, Lord Han, you had already prepared to deal with Yu Filiu. This arena competition just provided you with an excuse. Han Jingchuan smiled but remained silent, lifting the teacup and taking a sip. Chen Fei continued thinking, recalling more details. Yu Filiu is considered one of the top experts in control of the Seven Realm Martial Stage. Even if he wasn't your match, he should have had the ability to escape with his life after being suppressed by you. Yet, after being suppressed by you, he was swiftly killed by the guards. Although those guards are elite of Daxing Prefecture, it's still quite astonishing that they could easily kill a top expert like Yu Filiu. You must have made arrangements in advance, Lord Han. Setting down the teacup, Han Jingchuan chuckled lightly. You're very astute to figure it out so quickly. 
To deal with you feel you, I have been preparing for decades. Today was just the moment to close the net. Upon hearing this, various scenarios floated through Chen Fei's mind. Perhaps Han Jingchuan had begun poisoning figures like Yufi Liu decades ago among the old aristocracy. Or perhaps he had inserted spies around them long ago, learning their weaknesses. Whatever means he had used, in short, Han Jingchuan swiftly resolved Yufi Liu like thunder, catching Chen Fei's belief that Han Jingchuan certainly had a series of methods to completely suppress other old aristocrats and truly establish control over Daxing Prefecture. Thinking about this, Chen Fei couldn't help but feel impressed in his heart. Being the lord of a prefecture was indeed not to be underestimated. Later, Han Jingchuan and Chen Fei chatted casually for a while. He encouraged Chen Fei to interact more with Han Huai and conveyed a few words to Tian Ming before concluding the meeting. The next day, Chen Fei bid farewell and left. Han Huai personally escorted him onto the ship, waving goodbye. With the official ship of Daxing Prefecture, Chen Fei's return journey was much smoother than his arrival. In just one day, Chen Fei returned to the territory of Daiming Prefecture. Without wasting time, after disembarking, Chen Fei headed straight to the Lord's Hall and found Lord Tian Ming, discussing matters for several hours. After leaving the Lord's Hall, Chen Fei went to the inn, where he found his master, Xian Yuan Jiangshan, and Lord Qingmu, who had returned early, and brought them back to his small house on the outskirts of the city, where they reunited with Mu Yuqing and the others. In the following period, Chen Fei took Xian Yuan Jiangshan and Lord Qingmu on a thorough tour of Daiming Prefecture, introducing them to many novel things. During this time, Chen Fei also heard plenty of news about Daxing Prefecture. Sure enough, after dealing with Yu Filiu, Han Jingchuan's subsequent actions were relentless. He began targeting the major old aristocratic families within Daxing Prefecture. Some astute ones immediately pledged their allegiance. Some confident ones initially resisted, but with Han Jingchuan's thunderous methods, the resistors were quickly suppressed. As a result, the remaining old power factions all expressed their submission, and Han Jingchuan completely gained control of Daxing Prefecture. With the stability of Daxing Prefecture assured, the official opening day of the Tianqing Academy in Dailing Prefecture was also approaching. Tian Ming specifically found Chen Fei and instructed him to be prepared. Coincidentally, Xian Yuan Jiangshan and Lord Qingmu had their fill of travels outside and desired to return to Earth. After all, it had been decades since they had left their old acquaintances on Earth, quite a long time indeed. Additionally, Mu Yuqing and others also wished to return to Earth to visit. Therefore, Chen Fei personally escorted the group back to Earth. Upon returning to Earth, he spent a passionate night with his wife Lin Qiuhuan in their villa before bidding farewell and departing. Initially intending to return directly to Daiming Prefecture, halfway through the flight, Chen Fei looked down at the continuous mountains below and suddenly thought of the Earth Spirit Core deep within Kunlun. I wonder if there have been any changes at the Earth Spirit Core. Is that marvelous Yu Su Palace still there? With this thought in mind, Chen Fei decisively changed direction and headed straight for Kunlun. Descending from the sky, Chen Fei made his way to the entrance of the cave and entered it. Soon, Chen Fei arrived at that spacious cavern, where the stone pillars remained unchanged, everything seemingly as it was. Feeling relieved, Chen Fei closed his eyes and concentrated, beginning to cultivate the jade clear scripture he had obtained from the stone pillar, quickly entering a state of emptiness. Just like last time, the stone pillar began to rotate rapidly, seemingly pulling Chen Fei into it. When Chen Fei came to his senses, the ancient and majestic palace stood before him. On the plaque directly in front, the three characters, Yu Su Palace, were still clearly visible. Good to see it's still here. Chen Fei's heart stirred, and he immediately walked towards the steps. The last time he was here, each step he took required tremendous effort, and in the end, it took him several days to barely climb the twelve steps with all his might. Now, as Chen Fei ascended the steps, although he felt increased pressure, overall, it was much easier than the first time. Feeling that he had only used about 70% of his strength, Chen Fei successfully ascended the twelve steps. Arriving once again at the entrance of the Yusu Palace, Chen Fei looked up at the magnificent gate before him and couldn't help but take a deep breath. The first time, he had tried to push open the gate and enter the Yusu Palace. However, despite gritting his teeth and exerting all his strength, the gate remained unmoved. Chen Fei had to give up. Now, Chen Fei was prepared to try again. Placing both hands on the gate, Chen Fei began to exert force. At first, there was the same tremendous resistance, and the massive gate seemed unmoved, similar to last time. However, Chen Fei did not give up and continued to exert force bit by bit. Finally, as Chen Fei gritted his teeth and exerted his full strength, the entire gate almost remained unmoved. Could it still be impossible? Chen Fei felt somewhat disheartened, but then he gritted his teeth fiercely once again, unleashing the aura of his divine soul from his sea of consciousness, unreservedly crashing into the gate. Although Chen Fei's divine soul aura was vast, when it rushed onto the gate, it seemed to vanish without a trace. Yet, Chen Fei persisted and continued his assault. Just as Chen Fei's divine soul in his sea of consciousness was nearly exhausted, and he was preparing to give up. Suddenly, Chen Fei felt the gate under his palm tremble slightly. Chapter 3740 Moved Chen Fei's eyes brightened, exerting all his strength. 
Finally, the huge door slowly moved inward, eventually parting to reveal a crack as thin as a finger. Is it going to open? Just as Chen Fei was feeling delighted, suddenly, a multicolored light shot out from inside the door, rushing into Chen Fei's head. Ah! Chen Fei exclaimed, the strength in his arms instantly drained, and he fell to the ground with a slap. The door, which had just cracked open, immediately returned to its original state, tightly closed and unmoving. Chen Fei pushed the door, finding it unyielding, and promptly gave up. He knew that in his current condition, it was impossible for him to push open the door again right away. What was that thing that entered my mind? He sat down cross-legged, thinking about the multicolored light he had just seen. Holding his breath and concentrating, he inwardly observed his mind, entering it. Soon, Chen Fei saw a multicolored cloud floating above his divine sea in his mind. Was that light a cloud? What function does this cloud have? Chen Fei's mind stirred, attempting to stimulate the multicolored cloud with his vital energy, but there was no response when the vital energy entered. Vital energy doesn't work. Chen Fei tried again with his divine soul, entering the multicolored cloud and attempting to stimulate it again, but still, there was no response. Still no? Now, Chen Fei was puzzled. Immediately after, Chen Fei tried various martial intents, almost exhausting all the means he could use, attempting to activate the multicolored cloud, but in the end, there was still no response. Can't I activate this multicolored cloud? Chen Fei felt somewhat helpless, but after exploring it thoroughly and sensing nothing unusual, he could only let the multicolored cloud remain in his mind. Leaving Kunlun, he returned to Daiming Prefecture. After bidding farewell to family and friends, Chen Fei and Chen Huo arrived together at the main hall to see Tianming. Tianming looked at the two of them and nodded. Are you both ready? We're ready. They both nodded. Tianming waved his hand. Then let's not delay any longer, let's depart. Immediately, Tianming swept up Chen Fei and Chen Hua, soaring into the sky and flying away. In midair, Chen Hua couldn't help but ask curiously, Lord Master, are we flying directly to Dailing Prefecture? Tianming glanced at Chen Hua and said, aren't I your master? Chen Hua grinned, Chen Fei is my boss, and you're his master, so you're also my master. Master, are you tired? How about taking a break? You smooth talker. Tianming glared at Chen Hua but replied, of course, the journey is long. You brat, shut up and save my energy. Chen Hua wanted to say something more, but Chen Fei pulled him and explained, originally, there were passages in the original Dian Prefecture and Dashia Prefecture that could directly transport us to Dailing Prefecture. However, our Daiming Prefecture was established, and our relationship with Dalin Prefecture was poor. Keeping the passage was also unsafe, so we destroyed it. I see. Chen Hua nodded. Flying rapidly along the way, as they continuously crossed over mountains and rivers below, Chen Hua began to feel a bit bored. At that moment, Tianming suddenly descended quickly and landed on top of a hill. Master, what's wrong? Are you tired? Chen Hua asked. Chen Fei also looked at Tianming. Master, is something wrong? Tianming set them down and looked towards a valley below, speaking solemnly, they should be here for me. Hide yourselves well and protect yourselves. Chen Fei's heart stirred, nodding quickly. He led Chen Hua to open a distance and dug into a cave, hiding within. At this moment, Tianming spoke out, you've waited quite some time. The guests have arrived. Isn't it impolite for the host not to show up? With Tianming's voice, a slender, white-haired old woman leaned on a cane and walked out from the valley. From another direction, a one-armed old man also emerged from the forest, his gaze fixed on Tianming at the mountaintop. Others began to come out from different directions. Some were as fat as balls, some were thin and withered, and some were wrapped in black cloth, looking bizarre. Upon closer inspection, Chen Fei also noticed that almost all of these people had one or two disabilities and were quite elderly. Are these enemies of Lord Tianming? Chen Fei speculated. At this moment, Tianming, on the mountaintop, swept his gaze around and laughed aloud, it seems like they're all old acquaintances. What's this, looking for revenge? The old woman with the cane, upon hearing this, sharply lifted her voice full of resentment, Tianming, you killed my husband and child, ruined my appearance, left me destitute for tens of thousands of years. Shouldn't I seek revenge from you? The one-armed old man also spoke up at this moment, Tianming, you destroyed my sect, causing the Tianyun sect's lineage of hundreds of thousands of years to be cut off. If I don't kill you, I'll never close my eyes. The remaining people also successively spoke out, condemning Tianming. They accused Tianming of killing their relatives, friends, masters, and disciples. The scene was filled with righteous indignation, somewhat strangely lively. Chen Fei and Chen Hua, hiding in the cave, witnessed this scene. Chen Hua couldn't help but speak up, boss, from what I hear, Master Lord has killed quite a few people, huh? Chen Fei replied, since Lord Tianming took action, there must be a reason behind it. I trust him. At this moment, Tianming on the mountaintop suddenly burst into loud laughter facing the excited crowd. Tianming, what are you laughing at? The crowd gnashed their teeth, almost wishing to devour him alive. 
As Tianming's laughter subsided, his gaze was as sharp as torches as he glared at the old woman with the cane, sternly saying, Nankapo, you have the nerve to show up. Back then, you and the Poison King husband captured innocent civilians for experimentation. Moreover, to save your congenitally defective son, you and your husband directly poisoned the water source, killing half a million people in the city just to refine poison insects. Having committed such heinous acts, don't talk to me about killing your husband and son once. Even if I were to dismember them a thousand times, it still wouldn't be enough. Back then, I let you escape by luck. If you dare to come for revenge today, then I'll execute justice for those 500,000 people. After hearing these words, the old woman's face changed drastically, and her expression became frenzied. Tian Ming, stop spouting those false words of righteousness and morality. My husband and I have killed many people, but you, Tian Ming, are also tainted with bloodshed. You talk about executing justice. Why don't you first take your own life and apologize? Besides, killing those ants like ordinary people, what's the big deal? Upon hearing these words, Tian Ming's expression turned cold, shaking his head gently. Nan Kapo, so many years have passed. I thought you might have made some progress. But now it seems you're even more insane than before. Since that's the case, then you must die. With that said, Tian Ming waved his hand, grasping towards Nan Kapo in midair. Seeing this, Nan Kapo shouted loudly, attack. Instantly, everyone moved together, surrounding and attacking. Chapter 3741 In an instant, streams of primordial energy soared into the sky, and waves of majestic pressure enveloped the area. Chen Fei and Chen Hua had to retract their heads and hide inside the mountain cave. Immediately, they felt continuous booming outside, with explosions echoing one after another. Even the mountains where they were hiding trembled. At that moment, they felt as if the small world they were in was on the verge of destruction. After an unknown amount of time, the outside commotion gradually subsided, and the atmosphere began to dissipate. Inside the cave, Chen Hua spoke up, Boss, is it over? Has it ended? Chen Fei replied, let's wait a bit longer, don't take any risks. After all, Chen Fei had just sensed that those old folks outside, even the weakest among them, were probably at the level of controlling the six directions. Even though Chen Fei and Chen Huo were formidable, being involved with such high-level experts could result in severe injuries if not death, so it was better not to take any risks. After waiting for a while longer, Chen Huo couldn't bear it anymore and was ready to go out and check the situation. Just then, they heard Tian Ming's voice from outside, It's okay now, you can all come out. Upon hearing this, the two quickly crawled out of the cave. Then, upon seeing the scene before them, both of them were stunned. Because the previously lush green mountains and forests seemed to have been plowed over by a giant rake. Large swathes of greenery had disappeared, revealing the yellow soil and rocks underneath. Even the mountain where Chen Fei and Chen Huo were located seemed to have had its top forcibly shaved off. From this, one could see how intense the battle just now had been. Chen Hua's eyes flickered as he approached, looking concerned, Master, are you okay? Are you injured? Should I help you sit down and rest for a while? You, this kid, might not be good at anything else, but you sure are a master at flattering, Tian Ming glared at Chen Hua. Chen Hua grinned, scratching his head, Master, I'm just showing concern for you, old man. At this point, Chen Fei also approached and asked, Lord Tian Ming, are you really okay? Tian Ming waved his hand, just a bunch of small fries. Back then, they all turned tail and ran at the sight of me. Now they dare to appear in front of me. It seems that after being imprisoned for these tens of thousands of years, many have forgotten my name. Indeed, you're truly formidable, master. They're just a bunch of little minions, easily dealt with. Chen Huo wasn't shy about flattering again. However, as soon as he finished speaking, Tian Ming coughed up blood. Tian Ming, my lord. Chen Fei's expression tensed immediately. Tian Ming wiped away the blood, feeling somewhat sentimental. Still not as good as in the past, huh? Dealing with these guys, I've even been injured. Chen Fei didn't say much and quickly checked Tian Ming's pulse, then used Wu Qi to heal him. Fortunately, the injuries were not severe, and after 15 minutes, Tian Ming had recovered completely. After finishing the treatment, Tian Ming took out a small jade bottle and tossed it to Chen Fei. Here, this is for you. What's this? Chen Fei asked, puzzled. Tian Ming explained, it's something that old lady just had. She's skilled in using poison. This small jade bottle contains a poison she meticulously crafted called Thousand Extinction Poison. It's said to be extremely potent, fatal to those below mastery level, with just a touch. Perhaps there's some exaggeration, but its effect should be formidable. I have no use for such a thing, and ordinary people can't handle it either, it might harm themselves. You have Mu Yi's antidote ability, so it's perfect for you. Thank you, Lord Tian Ming, Chen Fei nodded, carefully stowing away the bottle of Thousand Extinction Poison. Beside them, Chen Hua looked on eagerly. Seeing Tian Ming hesitate, he spoke up, Master of the Manor, since the eldest has received something, shouldn't I receive something too? You're just a drag, Tian Ming retorted angrily. You still have the nerve to ask for gifts. Master of the manor, I've been quite helpful to the eldest brother usually. 
I'm considered his capable assistant. If I have something for self-defense, it strengthens our overall strength, indirectly aiding the eldest, isn't that so? Chen Hua smiled. Smooth talker. Tian Ming pulled out something and threw it to Chen Hua. Thank you, master of the manor, Chen Hua hurriedly caught it, but upon closer inspection, his expression soured. Master of the manor, you gave the eldest such a powerful treasure, and I get a cracked turtle shell? Isn't this favoritism? Tian Ming nearly laughed aloud. Turtle shell? This is a top-grade defensive weapon, the heaven-grade 8th rank Xuanwu shield refined by the Grand Alchemist of the DeSanta Manor. Forget it, give it back to me. A heaven-grade quality weapon, Xuanwu shield. Chen Hua's eyes lit up, then he tried infusing it with elemental energy, causing the hand-sized turtle shell to expand rapidly to human size. Chen Hua attacked the Xuanwu shield a few times, but all his strikes were deflected. Even Chen Fei tested it, and the shield remained unscathed. Delighted, Chen Hua carefully stored away the Xuanwu shield. What a great item, a true treasure. Thank you, master of the manor. Tian Ming gave him a playful knock and leaped into the air. All right, enough chatter. We wasted some time just now, let's continue our journey. In midair, Chen Fei thought about earlier events and couldn't help but ask, Lord Tian Ming, those people who appeared suddenly, could they be? Before Chen Fei could finish, Tian Ming cut in, no need to speculate. They were definitely sent by someone behind the scenes to intercept me. However, whoever's behind this knows they can't stop me. These people are just cannon fodder, merely testing me. Listening, Chen Fei's expression turned serious, with a hint of worry. Lord Tian Ming, then this trip to the Grand Spirit Mansion, I'm afraid. Tian Ming waved it off. No need to worry too much, it's not that dangerous yet. Even if it's Wu Qi, he won't act openly. Moreover, Wu Qi isn't the domain master he once was, lacking the authority to command the entire elemental realm. In the evening, they arrived at a colossal city brightly lit with lamps, towering before Chen Fei. Viewed from above, the city was vast, bustling with more activity than the Great Yen Manor, Great Xia Manor, or Great Qin Manor Chen Fei had visited, easily twice their size. Not to mention the bustling traffic of vehicles and pedestrians within the city. Descending from the sky, the three walked towards the main gate of the city. At the gate, facing the nearly hundred meter high city walls, Chen Fei and Chen Hua couldn't help but marvel again at the vastness of the Grand Spirit Mansion City. Afterward, they were surprised to find that despite the nightfall, the entrance to the vast city was bustling with activity, yet there were no guards stationed at the city gates. Moreover, there was no requirement to pay an entry fee as required by other cities, people could freely come and go, with only occasional patrols passing by. Looking up, Chen Fei sighed. So this is the Grand Spirit Mansion City. This is the largest city in the elemental realm. Chapter 3742 After entering the city, the three found a random inn to stay. Tian Ming instructed, rest well. Starting tomorrow, we probably won't have much time for relaxation. Chen Fei was slightly surprised but nodded in agreement. The next day, after breakfast, Tian Ming waited deliberately until the bustling midday hour approached before taking Chen Fei and Chen Hua out. Master of the manor, where are we going? Chen Hua asked. Tian Ming pointed ahead and said, there. The two followed his gaze and saw a majestic eight-story building towering conspicuously among the surrounding four or five-story structures. At the top of the building hung a circular emblem displaying the official insignia of the Grand Spirit Mansion, indicating it was no ordinary residence. Arriving at the building's entrance, the surrounding lively crowd suddenly thinned out. At the entrance stood two rows of elite guards clad in polished armor, each wielding spears with imposing demeanor. Passersby couldn't help but avoid the area just by passing through, feeling the pressure of their presence. We're here, Tian Ming finally spoke up. Chen Fei glanced at the elaborately decorated building and then at the guards at the entrance. Lord Tian Ming, where is this place? The distant friend's tower, the official reception of the Grand Spirit Mansion. Tian Ming replied. When the lords of other manners and geniuses come here, they generally stay here. Why are we here? Chen Fei asked, puzzled. Tian Ming smiled and said, because this place is crowded. Crowded? How does that matter? Chen Hua was also confused. You'll see. Tian Ming didn't elaborate further, just instructed them and headed straight towards the distant friend's tower. After a few steps, the guards at the entrance intercepted them. Halt! Who goes there, you're not allowed to proceed any further. Get lost! Tian Ming roared and casually waved his hand, knocking the two guards in front of him aside. Upon seeing this, the other soldiers instantly tensed up, activating their elemental energy and brandishing their weapons as they surrounded him. Nearby bystanders began to murmur excitedly. While most were curious rather than nervous, many stopped to watch. After all, in recent years, few dared to forcibly enter the distant friend's tower. Those who did were swiftly subdued and often executed on the spot by the Grand Spirit Mansion's officials. Today, witnessing someone brazenly storming the distant friend's tower was a rare spectacle for the locals of the Grand Spirit Mansion. I didn't expect to have such entertainment today. How long do you think that old man can hold out? I'd say half an hour. 
Half an hour? You're being optimistic. I bet it's no more than 15 minutes. The scene grew lively, and the guards completely surrounded Tian Ming. Even inside the distant friend's tower, some people pushed open windows to peer outside. Seeing this, Tian Ming resumed his movement. Glancing around, he snorted, I'm here to find someone. It's none of your business. Get lost. This is the residence for honored guests of the Grand Spirit Mansion, you. The guard tried to argue. Enough noise. With a sweeping motion, Tian Ming sent dozens of elite soldiers surrounding him flying. This immediately startled everyone present. So powerful? It looks like we've got a tough one this time. This is getting interesting. What tough guy? In front of our Grand Spirit Mansion, nothing is impressive. After releasing the soldiers, Tian Ming didn't hesitate. He unleashed a burst of energy directly towards the Distant Friends Tower. Since the Distant Friends Tower was the official reception of the Grand Spirit Mansion, it naturally had numerous defensive measures. Immediately, a layer of elemental energy shield lit up, attempting to block Tianming's burst of energy. However, what surprised everyone was that Tianming's burst of energy directly shattered the defense shield of the Distant Friends Tower. With a bang, it hit the building, smashing a corner. Now, not only the ordinary citizens below but even the guests inside the Distant Friends Tower became nervous, one by one poking their heads out to look. A chubby man, full of anger, rushed out from the building and shouted loudly, Who dares to attack my distant friend's tower? You're asking for death. But before the chubby man could finish his words, Tian Ming casually waved his hand again, sending this round ball-like fellow flying with a scream, crashing into the interior of the distant friend's tower. This time, everyone was truly shocked. That, that was Mr. Zhou, the top expert of the ninth level of the embryo realm. He was actually knocked away with one move. What's the background of this old man? Is he really that powerful? Looks like we've got a big show today. Amidst the buzzing discussions, the guards of the distant friend's tower looked on in trembling fear as Tian Ming approached step by step, his face filled with awe. Just as Tian Ming was about to step into the distant friend's tower, a middle-aged woman dressed in a gorgeous brocade gown, with a beautiful face, flew out from the tower to confront Tian Ming, speaking up, Tian Ming, you barged into my distant friend's tower and injured people. What is the meaning of this? Seeing this woman, Tian Ming chuckled and replied, old hag, at your age, why pretend to be youthful? I told you, I'm here to find someone. Someone tried to stop me, so naturally, I won't be polite. To Chen Fei and Chen Hua listening to this dialogue, it seemed straightforward. However, for the common people below who were spectating, it was an explosive revelation. Vice Manor Master Nan Shi has appeared. Who exactly is this guy? To dare address Vice Manor Master Nan Shi like that, is he asking for trouble? Tian Ming, that name sounds familiar. Could he be the infamous demon Tian Ming from years ago? What? That's impossible. I think it's quite possible. I heard Tian Ming has resurfaced, swallowed up the Grand Yan Manor and Grand Xia Manor down south, and established the Grand Ming Manor. It's just that our Grand Spirit Mansion hasn't officially recognized the Grand Ming Manor yet. The Lord of a Manor behaving like this? Something doesn't add up. Upon hearing Tian Ming's words, Vice Manor Master Nan Shi's facial muscles twitched violently a few times, her eyebrows trembling visibly in anger. Seeing Nan Shi about to unleash her energy, Tian Ming lightly trembled, and his aura surged violently, bursting out suddenly. Just a moment ago, full of rage and on the brink of murder, Nan Shi immediately felt Tian Ming's aura, and her aggression subsided. She quickly lowered her head and withdrew her aura. At this moment, in her calmed state, she realized that the person in front of her was none other than Tian Ming, who had shocked the entire Faixing region thousands of years ago by slaying dozens of experts at the domain realm level. Nan Shi's strength was considered top-notch among almost 99.99% of the practitioners in the DU realm. However, in front of Tian Ming, she realized she was nothing special. Regaining her composure, Nan Shi managed to force a diplomatic smile and calmly asked Tian Ming, what exactly are you trying to do? Chapter 3743 Tian Ming rubbed his chin and said, didn't I make it clear just now? I'm here to find someone. Originally, if you let me in and help me find the person, everything would be settled. But your people insisted on stopping me, Sai. Nan Shi suppressed her displeasure and continued to ask, who are you looking for? Tian Ming replied, I'm looking for three people. Which three? Tell me their names, and I'll help you find them, Nan Shi said impatiently, hoping Tian Ming would find them quickly and leave. Upon hearing this, Tian Ming squinted slightly and smiled, their names? Qin Huan Yu, Wu Yu Huan, and Song Yun Tian. As these three names were spoken, the crowd immediately erupted into a commotion once again. Even the onlookers, ordinary people, had heard of these three names, they were the lords of the three major mansions. Nan Shi's face changed drastically as she stared at Tian Ming. Tian Ming, are you really planning to cause trouble in our Grand Spirit Mansion? I'm looking for people. How does that translate to causing trouble? Tian Ming looked somewhat aggrieved. On the contrary, I'm here to seek justice from them. Seeking justice? What do you mean? Nan Shi frowned. In an instant, Tian Ming changed his tone and said, You don't know. 
I brought my disciples from the Grand Ming Mansion all the way here, only to be attacked on the road. Those people were not easy to deal with, strong and cunning, lying in ambush and attacking. I was almost seriously injured, and even my disciples nearly died in that battle. If it weren't for a critical moment. Next, Tian Ming vividly described the battle. His account was thrilling, depicting a perilous fight where, despite his injuries, he managed to narrowly defeat the enemy with a stroke of luck. If Chen Fei hadn't known the truth, he might have been swayed by Tian Ming's narrative. However, for the spectators who were unaware of the situation, they were completely captivated by the gripping tale. They widened their eyes, listening with great interest. Seeing this, Nanxi sensed something amiss and interrupted Tian Ming, what does all this have to do with finding someone? Of course, it's related. Tian Ming asserted firmly, after desperately fighting off those attackers and just before Nan Kapo breathed her last, I managed to extract the identity of the mastermind, those three. I initially didn't believe that the lords of the Grand Qi Mansion, Grand Wu Mansion, and Grand Song Mansion would stoop to such shameless acts. But later, I found several clues on the attackers that indeed led back to them. I have no choice but to believe it. The fact that these three mansion lords sent people to attack me demands an explanation. Isn't that only natural? Tian Ming wore an expression of righteous indignation as he looked at Nan Shi. What nonsense are you spouting? That's impossible. Nan Shi immediately denied. Why is it impossible? Tian Ming countered, then pulled out several pieces of evidence and displayed them to the crowd. Here are these items. Take a good look, everyone. Aren't these things belonging to the three mansion lords? Among the crowd below, many people examined the items closely, and Chen Hua had somehow slipped into the crowd. Ah, I think I remember. That jade pendant really belongs to the Grand Song Mansion. Could it be true? Someone led the questioning, and various doubts followed in succession. I also recall it. It looks very similar to something from the Grand Wu Mansion. I saw it last time. It definitely bears the mark of the Grand Qin Mansion. Tian Ming subtly gave Chen Hua an encouraging look, then continued addressing Nan Shi, Vice Manor Master Nan Shi, everyone has recognized them. As a Deputy Manor Master, surely you recognize them too? At this moment, Nan Shi naturally could tell that those three items were indeed belongings of the three mansion lords. But she was very clear in her mind that the assassination was not orchestrated by those three. The mastermind behind this was personally ordered by Wu Qi. However, this was something she couldn't say out loud. Nan Shi could only deny, there's no evidence. You can't make such hasty judgments based on just a few items. Tian Ming immediately said, then let the three of them come out and confront me face to face, and we'll clarify everything. That's impossible. Nan Shi vetoed. Tian Ming's face darkened, and he sternly said, why not? Are you implying that the Grand Spirit Mansion is harboring criminals, or are you saying that the Grand Spirit Mansion is in league with them? Tian Ming, you can't make baseless accusations. Nan Shi immediately denied. Then let them come out to confront me. Tian Ming stepped forward aggressively. No. Nan Shi didn't want to back down. But Tian Ming wasn't going to be polite. He directly pushed Nan Shi aside and rushed towards the distant friend's pavilion. If you won't let me, then I'll find them myself. Stop. Nan Shi was about to give the order to stop Tian Ming. But as soon as she said it, she realized that no one at the scene could stop Tian Ming. Watching Tian Ming approach with a roaring momentum, about to charge into the distant friend's pavilion. Finally, three figures emerged from the building, facing Tian Ming head on. Upon closer inspection, the three were Qin Huanyu, Wu Yuhuan, and Song Yun Tian. They finally came out. Tian Ming saw this and coldly questioned, how do you explain this matter? The three had already heard everything clearly while inside the building. At this moment, full of anger, they stared fiercely at Tian Ming and denied, Tian Ming, stop stirring up trouble. This has nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with you? How do you explain these items then? Tian Ming threw out the items. The three were furious and resentful. Just a piece of evidence doesn't prove anything. Besides, I lost that jade pendant a long time ago and have no idea who might have it now. Heh, just saying you lost it can absolve you of responsibility? Tian Ming sneered, do you think you can fool me like that? The three gritted their teeth. They knew full well that Tian Ming was framing them, they had not arranged the assassination. But they also knew that Wu Qi was likely behind this, so they couldn't say much more. Tian Ming, what exactly do you want to do? Tian Ming said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You sent people to attack me this time, so you must pay the price. After saying this, Tian Ming's aura surged, covering towards the three. The three were shocked. They hadn't expected Tian Ming to be so bold as to resort to violence at the distant friend's pavilion. For a moment, the three hurriedly mobilized their qi to counterattack. However, they were already a step behind, coupled with the psychological shadow from being defeated by Tian Ming several times before. Under their current haste, they couldn't muster even half of their usual strength. Against Tian Ming's assault, their qi shattered completely after a brief resistance. The three instantly spurted blood and were sent flying, crashing heavily onto the distant friend's pavilion with a loud rumble. Tian Ming was about to continue his attack, 
but at that moment, a majestic aura emanated from the central city of the mansion, pressing down on Tian Ming. Tian Ming, this is my grand spirit mansion. It won't tolerate your unruly behavior. As soon as the voice spoke, everyone understood, the grand spirit king had intervened. Chapter 3744 Tian Ming held back the oppressive aura while loudly proclaiming, Wu Qi, I was attacked, seeking justice from the culprit. Yet you intervened to stop me. Are you siding with the perpetrator? Tian Ming, enough with this drama, it ends now. Wu Qi's voice thundered. Tian Ming wanted to say more, but glanced down to see the onlookers standing dumbstruck as if they couldn't see or hear them. Wu Qi, your methods are always like this. Tian Ming said with a hint of sarcasm. Wu Qi's voice turned grave, Tian Ming, I haven't interfered with matters of the great Ming mansion. Why have you come here? I came to wander around. What, is that not allowed? Tian Ming retorted. Seeing this, Wu Qi didn't say much, simply uttered, do as you will, and then retracted his aura. As Wu Qi departed, the crowd of onlookers resumed their discussions lively, seemingly oblivious to the extraordinary events that had just unfolded. Tian Ming snorted coldly and declared, the three of you, today I spare your lives out of respect for Wu Qi. But if such a thing happens again, I will take your lives. With that said, Tian Ming turned and walked away. Chen Fei hurriedly followed with Chen Hua, leaving together. Back at the inn, Chen Hua was excited and surrounded Tian Ming, flattering him. Master Mansion Lord, you were so powerful and domineering just now, single-handedly opposing the entire Grand Spirit Mansion. Amazing. As for that Vice Mansion Lord and those three Mansion Lords, they were no match for you at all, utterly inadequate. Enough, stop flattering me, Tian Ming cut off Chen Hua. Chen Fei asked with concern, Lord Tian Ming, are you alright? After all, Wu Qi made a move, and you've previously said you're no match for him. So naturally, I worry you might have been injured by Wu Qi. Tian Ming shook his head lightly, I'm fine, Wu Qi didn't really make a move. Chen Fei breathed a sigh of relief and then asked, Lord Tian Ming, after causing such a stir at the distant friend's pavilion today, do you have any plans? Plans? There are none. Tian Ming chuckled, just making a name for myself. A name? Chen Fei was puzzled. In his view, Tian Ming was already quite famous, and there seemed to be little to gain from further renown. Moreover, after becoming renowned, it didn't seem to bring much benefit. Tian Ming explained, I've been suppressed for tens of thousands of years, and many have nearly forgotten me. Today, I just wanted everyone to remember me. Then he looked at Chen Fei and said, not just me, but you should also make a name for yourself. Me, make a name? Chen Fei wasn't accustomed to being so assertive. Tian Ming continued, after today's events, you'll definitely have people looking for you. Remember, don't be afraid, show your true strength. This. Chen Fei was still somewhat puzzled. After all, his usual habit was to remain reserved and conceal his true abilities, not to let others see his true strength. Seeing this, Tian Ming didn't explain further. He just patted Chen Fei on the shoulder and said, don't worry, you'll understand when the academy starts. With that, Tian Ming disappeared without a trace. Chen Fei and Chen Hu remained at the inn. As Tian Ming had anticipated, even before the next day arrived, in the afternoon following the spread of the incident at Distant Friends Pavilion, several people came knocking on their door. Nearly all of them were young cultivators, with the majority being from the Grand Spirit Mansion, and a smaller number from the Grand Qin Mansion, Grand Song Mansion, and Grand Wu Mansion. They clamored that the Grand Ming Mansion had insulted them and demanded that Chen Fei and Chen Huo come out and apologize by kowtowing. Of course, there were also some who were merely spectators and didn't mind the commotion. Previously, Chen Fei would have completely ignored such matters. However, following Tian Ming's recent words, Chen Fei and Chen Hua stepped out together. As soon as they stepped out, they heard a tumultuous uproar of shouting and cursing. You petty thieves of the Grand Ming Mansion, why haven't you rolled out yet? You arrogant thieves dared to insult our Grand Spirit Mansion. Come out and kowtow in apology. Cowards, come out and meet your death. If you don't come out, we'll come in. Amidst the clamor, the two walked out. Chen Fei scanned the surroundings and then shouted sternly, who's making all this noise? The crowd was startled by his shout, and the previous commotion abruptly quieted down. They looked at each other before focusing their gaze on Chen Fei. Soon after, a burly young cultivator stepped forward, pointing at Chen Fei with a face full of indignation. Chen Fei, you little thief of the Grand Ming Mansion. Today, I, Zhao Quan, will teach you a lesson and show you the might of our Grand Qin Mansion. Having said that, cheers and applause erupted from the crowd. Go for it, Zhao brother. Zhao Quan, take down that little thief. Show the power of our mansion. Amidst the noise, Zhao Quan stepped forward to face Chen Fei, extending his right hand in a gesture of challenge, ready to strike. However, Chen Fei merely glanced at him and ignored him, saying to Chen Hua behind him, This boring waste, it's your turn. You. Zhao Quan was immediately enraged by these words and swung a fist towards Chen Fei. But Chen Hua chuckled, swiftly moving like the wind to stand in front of Zhao Quan, seizing his arm and laughing, Big guy, your opponent is me. 
You're asking for death. Zhao Quan roared angrily and swung a fist towards Chen Hua. However, he clearly underestimated Chen Hua's strength. Chen Hua effortlessly dodged his punch and then delivered two slaps to Zhao Quan's face. Enraged, Zhao Quan unleashed his full aura and retaliated frantically. However, being at the cultivation level of soul formation realm, sixth stage, he was clearly no match for Chen Hua, who was at the soul infant realm, seventh stage. After having his fun, Chen Hua slapped Zhao Quan, sending him flying and knocking him out cold when he landed on the ground. If Chen Hua hadn't held back, he could have easily killed him with that slap. The scene silenced the onlookers, leaving them with expressions of shock. Seeing this, Chen Fei chuckled, anyone else wants to try? The crowd glanced at each other, and finally, a young swordsman stepped forward proudly, saying, I'm Chen Guanyin of the Grand Spirit Mansion's Yunshao sect. Let's fight. However, Chen Fei just glanced at him and shook his head. Not enough. What do you mean? Chen Guanyin frowned. Sighing, Chen Fei said, what I mean is, you alone aren't enough for me to bother with. It's pointless. Forget it. Each of those who shouted just now, come at me together to save time. Chen Fei's words instantly caused an uproar. These young cultivators were all indignant and furious, unable to contain their anger and continued to curse. Arrogant fool. Doesn't know the immensity of heaven and earth. Chen brother is a genius among the younger generation of Yunshao sect. He alone is enough to kill him. How dare he speak arrogantly. Since he's asking for death, let's just end him. Let's all attack and kill him together. Chapter 3745 The shouts and cries filled the air. Chen Fei chuckled, stepping forward with a palm aimed at Chen Guanyun. Originally, Chen Guanyun was still considering whether joining in would damage his reputation as a genius disciple of the Yunshao sect. Now, seeing Chen Fei attack first, he couldn't be bothered with such thoughts anymore. His long sword danced, thrusting towards Chen Fei's hand. Flowing Cloud Sword Technique The seventh move, Flying Cloud Cross In that instant, Chen Guanyun's long sword whistled, swiftly trembling as it drew numerous afterimages in the air, resembling flying clouds assaulting their target. Using this move, Chen Guanyin smiled because he felt he executed it with exceptional skill, even surpassing his usual practice, demonstrating an extraordinary performance. With such prowess, this move alone could at least defeat a cultivator at the Soul Infant Realm, second stage. If he could truly defeat Chen Fei, Chen Guanyin would become renowned. Thinking this, Chen Guanyin was even more delighted, almost impatient to see his sword light piercing Chen Fei. However, Chen Fei's next action stunned him. Faced with such a sharp move, Chen Fei didn't dodge at all. Instead, he directly grabbed Chen Guanyin's sword with his right palm. Using your hand against a sword? Are you seeking death? This scene prompted everyone to think the same. However, right after, Chen Fei's palm really made contact with Chen Guanyin's sword. Contrary to the anticipated scene of blood and flesh flying, a sound of clashing metal rang out. Chen Fei forcefully gripped the sword with his hand. Chen Guanyin was astonished, his face showing disbelief. Then, he gritted his teeth and tried to cut off Chen Fei's hand. But the sharp blade couldn't even scratch Chen Fei's palm. Instead, when Chen Fei exerted a bit of force, there was a crisp crack, and Chen Guanyin's long sword snapped. My flowing cloud sword. Chen Guanyin shouted madly, then glared at Chen Fei with full rage, as if preparing to fight seriously. You destroyed my sword, I will kill. Before Chen Guanyin could finish speaking, Chen Fei slapped him with his right palm. Chen Guanyin was knocked to the ground, instantly knocked out. Ah! Uh. Others who were ready to attack were stunned, their faces showing surprise. Chen Fei had already turned into a residual image, rushing over. Immediately, with a series of loud noises, 20 to 30 people were all knocked away, crashing to the ground, unable to get up. Chen Fei stopped and swept his gaze over the crowd, saying calmly, anyone else wants to continue? The remaining people all lowered their heads and quickly retreated. Boring. Chen Fei sighed, turned around with his hands behind his back, and walked back inside. Chen Hua followed behind, laughing heartily, if the Grand Spirit Mansion wants trouble, send someone powerful. Don't send these useless trash, it's just a waste of time. As expected, this battle in front of the inn quickly spread throughout the Grand Spirit Mansion. Consequently, Chen Fei and Chen Hua naturally became the constant targets of curses among the people of the Grand Spirit Mansion. Especially many young cultivators, filled with indignation, clamored to teach Chen Fei and Chen Hua a severe lesson and restore the dignity of the Grand Spirit Mansion. The situation escalated further. By the second day, there were even enraged individuals gathering at the city gates, shouting for the lord of the mansion to send someone to kill the three from the Grand Ming Mansion. Amidst this turmoil, in an elegant bamboo pavilion in the western outskirts of the Grand Spirit Mansion, over a dozen young men and women were gathered, discussing and sipping tea. However, upon closer proximity, one would realize they weren't discussing scholarly topics but rather the current heated topic outside about Chen Fei and Chen Hua. Brother Wu Jing, the matter with the young deputy lord of the Grand Ming Mansion has stirred quite a commotion outside. Many are waiting for you to take action. 
Addressed as Brother Wu Jing, the young man dressed in a dark blue robe with a gilded jade crown on his head exuded a noble and imposing aura, naturally imposing pressure upon others. Wu Jing raised his teacup, surveyed the people present, then took a sip of tea and smiled. Brother Qin jests. It's just a rebellion from a petty thief, hardly worth mentioning. Upon hearing this, many people's eyes brightened, offering compliments. Indeed, Brother Wu's demeanor is exceptional. Exactly, such a clown isn't worth Brother Wu's intervention. Amidst the compliments, a peculiar voice suddenly spoke up. I've heard that Chen Fei has inherited Tianming's legacy and possesses considerable strength. Brother Wu, perhaps you shouldn't underestimate him. These words immediately drew everyone's attention to Han Huai, the speaker. After a brief silence, someone chuckled and spoke. Brother Han, you worry too much. It's just rumors, hardly worth mentioning. Even if it's true, so what? Chen Fei is Tianming's disciple, but Brother Wu is the grandson of the Grand Spirit King. It's just a matter of dealing with an underling. Some even started to insinuate. Brother Han, are you speaking up for Chen Fei? Could it be you have some other thoughts? I heard that the Grand Xing Mansion and the Grand Ming Mansion have been getting closer lately. Could it be that Brother Han? Han Huai didn't respond, just smiled lightly. I was just speaking casually. If anyone feels uncomfortable, I retract my words. To Wu Jing's ears, however, Han Huai's words carried a hint of something unusual. After all, today's gathering of talents from various mansions was organized by him. The purpose was to gather experts and strengthen their forces before the start of classes at Tianqing Academy. The topic of Chen Fei just now was casually discussed, but Han Huai's remarks made it more than casual. If Wu Jing were to let it pass, it might appear as if he feared Chen Fei. For Wu Jing, who considered himself the top figure at Tianqing Academy, this was intolerable. So Wu Jing's eyes flickered as he looked at Han Huai and suddenly spoke up. Brother Han, your reminder is well-intentioned and appreciated. Although the so-called young deputy lord of the Grand Ming Mansion is not worth mentioning, the turmoil he's caused in our Grand Spirit Mansion is unsettling. As a member of the Grand Spirit Mansion, it's also my responsibility to resolve this matter. With these words, the people present couldn't help but change their expressions. Brother Wu, do you intend to meet Chen Fei? When will you go? Should we prepare? Wu Jing stood up, waved his hand, and confidently declared, better to act now than to delay. Let's move. Speaking of which, I'd also like to see for myself the strength of the disciple mentioned by Brother Han. Having said this, Wu Jing glanced at Han Huai and then led the way out. The others quickly followed. Han Huai remained behind, still wearing that polite smile on his face. However, as he took his final steps, he murmured softly to himself, I hope you won't regret this. With that, Han Huai quickened his pace and followed them. Chapter 3746 At noon that day, while dining at the inn, Chen Fei received a beautifully crafted invitation. It invited him to a gathering to exchange ideas, signed by someone named Wu Jing. Chen Fei inquired and soon learned that Wu Jing was the grandson of Wu Qi and a renowned young genius cultivator of the Grand Spirit Mansion. It seems someone couldn't sit still, Chen Fei smirked, accepting the invitation. After lunch, Chen Fei headed directly to the location specified in the invitation. Upon reaching the gate, two guards immediately approached with vigilant expressions. Without waiting for them to speak, Chen Fei handed over the invitation. Wu Jing invited me. Please inform him. The guards took the invitation, glanced at it, and swiftly entered the house. A moment later, a steward-like man accompanied by the guards approached. The steward scrutinized Chen Fei from head to toe, his expression tinged with arrogance as he asked, Are you Chen Fei? Seeing this, Chen Fei raised an eyebrow, his expression darkening. Not only did Wu Jing not personally welcome him despite the invitation, but sending a steward out also showed disdain. The steward's arrogant demeanor made it even more clear that he looked down on others. Under normal circumstances, Chen Fei might have ignored such a minor figure. But now, since both were striving for recognition, Chen Fei would not hold back. I am Chen Fei, he nodded, then looked at the steward. And you are? The steward hesitated, his brow furrowing. Even a fool could tell he wasn't Wu Jing. By saying so, Chen Fei was clearly showing he intended to meet on equal terms. I am the steward of young Master Wu, the steward finally replied with a touch of awkwardness. Young Master Wu asked me. Before he could finish, Chen Fei interrupted coldly, since you are not Wu Jing, then fetch Wu Jing. The steward was at a loss for words. Chen Fei narrowed his eyes. If you invite someone, you should observe the proper etiquette. Since some people don't understand that, there's no need for me to stay. With that, Chen Fei turned and made as if to leave. Now thoroughly flustered, the steward didn't know how to respond. Just as Chen Fei seemed about to leave, a voice came from inside the house, laughing. We've been remiss in welcoming our guest from afar. Please, Chen Gongzi, stay a moment. Chen Fei halted and saw a group of people emerging. Among them, the leader wore a dark blue robe and a gilded jade crown, his handsome face easily identifying him as Wu Jing. 
Behind Wu Jing were several others, among whom Chen Fei casually recognized a few familiar faces, Qin from the Grand Qin Mansion, Yun Shi from the Grand Wu Mansion, and Han Huai from the Grand Xing Mansion. Presumably, these accompanying individuals were young talents from various mansions who had come for the opening of Tianqing Academy. The young master. The steward attempted to complain upon seeing Wu Jing approaching. However, a stern glare from Wu Jing silenced him, and Wu Jing rebuked, Chen Gongzi is my invited guest. Why did you not inform me earlier? Step back, and let this not happen again. Clearly, he was passing the blame. The steward had no choice but to comply, bowing his head and stepping aside. Then, Wu Jing looked at Chen Fei and smiled, I am Wu Jing. Chen Fei replied indifferently, Chen Fei. I have heard of Chen Gongzi's great name for a long time. Please come inside, Wu Jing greeted with a smile, his etiquette flawless, almost impeccable. Entering the room, everyone gathered around, dishes and wine served, exchanging pleasantries. Soon after, Chen Fei set down his wine cup, looked at Wu Jing, and spoke up, Young Master Wu invited me here, not just to drink. Wu Jing smiled, since Chen Xiong has brought it up, I'll be direct. Recently, we've heard that Chen Xiong defeated many talents in our Grand Spirit Mansion, making quite a name for himself. We couldn't help but be curious and wished to spar with Chen Xiong. Finally getting to the point was within Chen Fei's expectations. He glanced around and calmly said, Spar? Will you each come up one by one, or all together? His words instantly silenced the room. Chen Fei had said similar things before, facing local experts of the Grand Spirit Mansion, which hadn't amounted to much. However, now confronting the top geniuses from various mansions, his audacity was striking. Even though Wu Jing maintained his composed facade, he couldn't help but twitch involuntarily, a hint of murderous intent flashing in his eyes. Qin Yu, who had a score to settle with Chen Fei, couldn't sit still. He stood up abruptly, pointing at Chen Fei angrily, Chen, you have no shame. You were invited by Wu Xiong as a gesture of respect. How dare you boast like this? Apologize to Wu Xiong now. Chen Fei looked innocent, shrugged, and spread his hands, didn't you all mention sparring? So I just asked. Why should I apologize? Could it be that you're afraid? You. The crowd erupted in anger. Qin Yu's energy surged, and he charged at Chen Fei, ready to attack. Arching an eyebrow, Chen Fei remarked, you dare to strike again? It seems letting you off last time didn't teach you anything. Previously, Chen Fei had explored treasures with Nine Finger Demon, engaging young talents from several mansions in that valley. Chen Fei had directly killed Song Huan of the Grand Song Mansion and Xia Yu of the Grand Xia Mansion. Qin Yu should have perished in that encounter too, but he used some treasure to protect his primordial spirit, narrowly saving his life. While he survived, Qin Yu suffered severe injuries and needed a long recovery period. He wasn't back to his peak, but latching onto Wu Jing's influence, encountering Chen Fei again, Qin Yu naturally seized the opportunity for revenge. However, he grossly underestimated Chen Fei's strength. Back then, Chen Fei relied on the residual power of Tian Ming and collaborated with Nine Finger Demon to achieve those kills. Even now, without Tian Ming's assistance, Chen Fei's own strength far surpassed what it was back then. Therefore, facing Qin Yu's attack, Chen Fei smiled. He raised his right hand and slapped Qin Yu across the face. Smack! The crisp sound echoed as Chen Fei's palm landed on Qin Yu's face. Qin Yu was momentarily stunned, standing dumbfounded. The slap didn't cause much physical harm, but it dealt a massive blow to Qin Yu's pride. Qin Yu's expression fluctuated wildly, eyes turning bloodshot, full of rage. I'm going to kill you. At that moment, Qin Yu seemed to lose his rationality, his aura exploding as he lunged at Chen Fei. Seeing this, Chen Fei's gaze turned cold. He also unleashed his qi and met Qin Yu's attack head on. Qin Yu seemed genuinely enraged, attacking without reservation, each move carrying lethal intent aimed at Chen Fei's vital points. Chen Fei, also becoming heated, suddenly shouted, you're asking for death. In an instant, Chen Fei's momentum surged, drawing the Nine Extreme Sword and slashing at Qin Yu. Feeling the power of the Nine Extreme Sword, Qin Yu, who had been in a fiery rage, suddenly sobered up, his face filled with panic. He hastily retreated while pleading to Wu Jing for help, Brother Wu, save me. Chapter 3747 Wu Jing had originally intended to let Qin Yu spar with Chen Fei first, observing and assessing the situation before intervening himself. Although he had anticipated that Qin Yu might not be Chen Fei's match, he didn't expect Qin Yu to be so incompetent that he was driven into a corner after just a few moves by Chen Fei. What a useless fellow. Wu Jing cursed inwardly but still stepped forward. After all, Qin Yu was the first among this group to officially side with him. Since Wu Jing aimed to win people's hearts, he couldn't afford to let Qin Yu be slain by Chen Fei without intervening, he had to step in and save him. Otherwise, all the efforts he had made earlier to win people over would become a joke. With this thought flashing through his mind, Wu Jing reached into his right hand and pulled out a golden shield, tossing it into the air. The shield spun swiftly, rapidly enlarging. At the critical moment, it appeared in front of Qin Yu, blocking a strike from Chen Fei's Nine Extreme Sword. 
However, the shockwaves from the sword still struck Qin Yu's body, causing him to fall backward, his head split open and blood streaming, looking extremely miserable. Seeing his sword strike blocked, Chen Fei didn't stop. He swung his arm again to attack. Witnessing this, Wu Jing's eyes narrowed, and he shouted angrily, Stop it! As he spoke, Wu Jing drew out a golden scepter and smashed it directly at Chen Fei's nine extreme sword. The scepter and the long sword clashed in midair, with qi compressing instantly. Sparks flew, and finally, they exploded violently, separating the two. Wu Jing's face was filled with anger as he glared at Chen Fei and scolded, Chen Fei, you've gone too far. Chen Fei remained indifferent, looking at Wu Jing with narrowed eyes. He replied calmly, young master Wu, what do you mean by that? What do I mean? Wu Jing retorted, just a friendly sparring match. But you just made a ruthless move against Qin Yu. Isn't that excessive? Hearing this, Chen Fei couldn't help but laugh, made a ruthless move. Young Master Wu can see that I made a ruthless move. But when Qin Yu was attacking fiercely with lethal intent, why didn't Young Master Wu step in to stop him? Or is it that Young Master Wu's discerning eye only works for your own people? With these words, Wu Jing's expression darkened, and as he looked at Chen Fei, his eyes revealed a hint of undisguised anger. Qin Yu, helped to his feet by someone, hurriedly defended himself, Chen Fei, you're talking nonsense and even slandering Young Master Wu. Shut your mouth. Just now, I was only having a normal sparring match. It was you who tried to kill someone. After Qin Yu finished speaking, Chen Fei burst into hearty laughter. Chen Fei, what are you laughing at? Qin Yu gritted his teeth in anger. Shaking his head, Chen Fei replied, Qin Yu, you're shamelessly pretending to be innocent. Why drag everyone else down with you? Everyone present is a top cultivator from various major mansions. Do you think anyone couldn't see what happened just now? I think, Qin Yu, you're just trying to fool everyone here. Originally, a few people were about to speak up in defense of Qin Yu. However, once Chen Fei said this, their words immediately swallowed back down. After all, the truth was clear to everyone. Engaging in verbal debate would only diminish their status. Therefore, everyone fell silent and said nothing more. Qin Yu realized that trying to lie and argue wasn't a good idea. His expression immediately became embarrassed, and he could only look towards Wu Jing for help. Wu Jing paused for a moment, then spoke in a deep voice, my fault for not setting the rules beforehand, which led the sparring to deviate. Since both sides are at fault, let's call it quits here. Agreed? Qin Yu naturally agreed, hastily nodding, since young master Wu has spoken, I have no objections. Then, Wu Jing turned to look at Chen Fei. Chen Fei squinted slightly, remained silent for a while, and did not respond immediately. Seeing this, Wu Jing's eyes gradually turned cold. The atmosphere on the scene tensed bit by bit as the confrontation seemed imminent between the two sides. Just when the tension was at its peak and everyone felt the impending clash, suddenly, Chen Fei laughed, I'll give young master Wu some face too. Immediately, Chen Fei sheathed his nine extreme sword and said, I just remembered, there's something I need to attend to at the inn. I'll take my leave. Wu Jing saw this and naturally seized the opportunity, Chen Fei, please go ahead. We won't detain you. As Chen Fei left, the people in the room immediately gathered around, all looking towards Wu Jing. Wu Jing, it seems we underestimated that guy's strength, huh? Yeah. We thought he was just all talk, but turns out he has some real ability to defeat Qin Yu. Qin Yu was injured, so it's understandable. Young Master Wu, how did you feel about Chen Fei during your exchange just now? This question hit the nail on the head, and everyone turned their gaze towards Wu Jing. Wu Jing squinted slightly, glanced at everyone, and smiled as he replied, that guy does have some strength indeed. However, that's about it. In my view, I'm 90% confident I could win against him. Upon hearing this, a chorus of praise erupted. No wonder young Master Wu. Young Master Wu clearly didn't go all out. That kid has some brains, after all. If he had really provoked young Master Wu, he would have been in big trouble. Wu, in two days, the Heavenly Star Academy will start. You'll have to take care of us then. Yeah, yeah. Amidst the compliments, Wu Jing smiled faintly, but discreetly withdrew his right hand into his sleeve. Because at this moment, the back of his hand had a minor wound that had split open at the tiger's mouth area from the clash between the scepter and the nine extreme sword. Though very minor and not worth mentioning, it was enough to show that the opponent's strength had exceeded expectations. If I were to face the Chen Fei with all my strength, I'd probably only have a 70% chance of winning. Wu Jing sighed inwardly and quietly concealed his little trick. Over the next two days, the news about Tian Ming, Chen Fei, and Chen Hua continued to spread and ferment within the Great Ling Mansion. Their reputation grew steadily. Occasionally, there were challengers, but they were swiftly dealt with by Chen Hua without needing to appear. However, the matter of Wu Jing inviting Chen Fei to spar and exchange remained largely unmentioned, almost suppressed. Even the rumors deliberately spread by Chen Fei were quickly suppressed and disappeared without a trace. Obviously, this was the result of Wu Jing's influence. 
In this manner, on the eve of the opening of the Heavenly Star Academy, Tian Ming, who had been missing for several days, finally returned to the inn. Chen Fei and Chen Hua couldn't help but surround him. Master, where have you been these days? We were worried something happened to you and couldn't sleep well. Tian Ming glared at Chen Hua, smooth talker. I was handling official business. Chen Fei asked, regarding the spots at the Heavenly Star Academy? Tian Ming nodded, exactly. Is it confirmed? Can we enroll? Chen Hua asked excitedly. Tian Ming rolled his eyes, it's not that simple. Let's just say I've managed to secure some key points, giving us hope. But specifics will depend on tomorrow's situation. Chapter 3748 Chen Hua and Chen Fei wanted to ask, but Tian Ming waved his hand, saying, All right, old man's tired after several days. I need to rest properly. Don't disturb me. With that said, Tian Ming returned to his room. Chen Hua muttered, Why is Master acting so secretive? Is there something he can't tell us? However, Chen Fei seemed to realize something and said in a low voice, Lord Tian Ming is injured. Injured? How? Chen Hua was surprised. Chen Fei shook his head, since Lord Tian Ming doesn't want to talk about it, let's not press further. Early next morning, Tian Ming brought Chen Fei and Chen Hua to the location of the Heavenly Star Academy. It was a complex of buildings constructed at the foot of the Western Leaf Mountain in the western outskirts of the Great Ling Mansion. At first glance, although the buildings looked decent, they seemed rather ordinary, even less impressive than some mansions of official families. However, those in the know understood that the key to the Heavenly Star Academy lay not in its exterior but in what lay within. The academy was situated near the Western Leaf Mountain, which itself was a royal garden of the Imperial Wu family of the Great Ling Mansion, with a small spiritual vein below that could supplement the spiritual energy needed for cultivation, thereby enhancing cultivation speed. Previously, such spiritual vein sites were exclusively enjoyed by royal nobles. With the construction of the Heavenly Star Academy here, its students could benefit from the nourishment of the spiritual vein, which was a significant privilege in itself. Not to mention, the most attractive aspect of the Heavenly Star Academy was that it arranged for elders who had previously ventured into the demon realm to come and lecture. There was even the possibility of inviting station demons to give talks and teachings. For young talents aspiring to compete for 100 spots, this was the most crucial attraction. The reason why the major mansions sent their top young cultivators here was precisely for this opportunity. There was still some time before the ceremonies began, but a considerable crowd had already gathered at the entrance of the academy. However, most of these people were unlikely to enter and participate in the opening ceremony. Because this ceremony was not entirely open to the public. Only those with deep connections or strong innate talents, issued with permits, could enter the academy to attend the ceremony. Others could only watch from outside. As for the young talents from various mansions who were truly participating in the academy selection, as seed students, they had already entered the academy and prepared themselves. As the time approached, a bell rang, and the gates of the academy opened. Instantly, a crowd surged forward. However, the guards at the gate were well prepared, their eyes wide and chests puffed out as they shouted, silence. The vigorous sound waves immediately quieted the scene. Displaying their permits, one by one, they lined up for verification and entered the academy. Most passed without incident, but of course, a few individuals attempting to sneak in with fake permits were quickly discovered and promptly thrown out, their legs and feet broken. With such vivid examples, those with malicious intent in the crowd naturally dared not act recklessly. Those with permits were not numerous, only about two to three hundred people, and they were quickly checked and allowed inside. The remaining people could only watch eagerly from outside, hoping to catch a glimpse of the brilliance of these young geniuses through the fence. At this moment, Chen Fei and the others were still standing at the back of the crowd, not making any moves. Rubbing his nose, Chen Hua looked at Tian Ming and asked, Master, they're asking for permits. How do we get in? Tian Ming rolled his eyes, in the elemental realm, there are places even I, Tian Ming, cannot go. What nonsense about permits and all. I'll take you guys in. With that, Tian Ming directly took Chen Fei and Chen Hua, soared into the air, flew over the gates of the academy, and headed straight inside. Instantly, the whole place was in an uproar. The guards at the gate turned pale, shouting frantically. Who dares to barge into the Heavenly Star Academy? Come down immediately and surrender. Tian Ming laughed heartily, his voice booming through the air. I heard about the new academy in the Great Ling Mansion, so I brought my disciples here to congratulate. What, even guests congratulating need to be stopped outside, Great Ling King? As soon as people heard the name, Tian Ming, the scene exploded. After all, Tian Ming and his disciples had caused quite a stir in the mansion recently, leaving many residents of the Great Ling Mansion itching with resentment. The guards responsible for guarding the gate were particularly tense and hesitant, unsure whether to take action. Just as the guards were nervously hesitating about whether to act. The voice of the Great Ling King finally echoed from afar. Since they are guests, please have a seat. Upon hearing this, the guards breathed a collective sigh of relief and quickly stepped aside, respectfully ushering the three inside. The Great Ling King is indeed a hospitable person. 
Ha ha ha. Tian Ming laughed heartily and, with Chen Fei and Chen Hua, swaggered into the academy, heading directly towards the competition arena where the ceremony was being held. At this moment, the competition arena was already set up. Most of the guest seats were also filled. Among them, those seated were mostly the audience who had entered with permits just now. Only at the very front were several empty seats. Above these seats were lists, and a glance would show that they were reserved specifically for the various mansions, clearly meant for their distinguished guests. Under the gaze of everyone, Tian Ming descended from the sky with his two disciples. He scanned the seats below, smiling as he spoke, there are quite a few people here, but there are still seats available. I'll just sit anywhere. With that, Tian Ming took Chen Fei and Chen Hua and sat down in a seat reserved for the Dasong Mansion. Immediately, a murmur of whispers swept through the audience. Chen Fei could even sense from the direction of one of the windows in the pavilion in front of the competition arena a glare filled with anger. However, Tian Ming completely ignored it as if he hadn't seen anything. Soon, someone came over and rearranged a seat for him in the front row by the side. After arranging the seats, the various distinguished guests began to enter the stage one by one under the scrutiny of everyone. Most of the arrivals were the masters of the major mansions, at least at the level of vice masters. They entered with smiles, leading their own young geniuses to their seats. Tian Ming appeared nonchalant, sitting in his seat, nodding and greeting those who came in. A lot of familiar faces. We meet again. It's not easy to get together like this. Please, have a seat. Of course, most people paid no attention to Tian Ming. However, figures like Qin Huanyu, Wu Yuhuan, and Song Yuntian visibly displayed resentment on their faces. Song Yuntian, in particular, seemed like he wanted to swallow Tian Ming whole. After all, Tian Ming was now occupying his position, leaving him no choice but to sit sullenly on the side. It was akin to a slap in the face, leaving him angry but powerless. Chapter 3749 After everyone had taken their seats, Wu Qi, the Great Spirit King, finally appeared on the front platform. Without wasting any time, Wu Qi stood up and announced, the opening ceremony of the Heavenly Star Academy is officially beginning. After a brief introduction of some basic information, he quickly moved on to the most anticipated point for everyone. That was the list of the first batch of students enrolled in the Heavenly Star Academy. According to earlier reports, there were only a hundred spots available in the first batch of the Heavenly Star Academy. Among these spots, it went without saying that the talented students from various mansions would definitely secure their places. This also meant that, aside from them, young talented cultivators from various mansions would have to compete for the remaining spots. After all, these talented cultivators, though they had various reasons for not becoming the top seeds of the major mansions, were undoubtedly among the best. Naturally, they also wanted to enter the Heavenly Star Academy, not to be left behind, and prepare for the future to compete for the hundred spots to the Demon Realm. Therefore, at this moment, the most attention was actually on the list of these young talents who had not become seeds. For a moment, everyone's eyes focused unanimously on Wu Qi. Wu Qi wasted no time and publicly announced the list. As expected, the talented cultivators brought by various mansions, such as Wu Jing, Qin, Yunxi, Han Huai, and others, were indeed on the list. Just this group alone accounted for nearly 30 people. As a result, only two-thirds of the spots were left for other young talents. The people below were naturally very nervous. Almost every time Wu Qi read out a name, there would be a slight stir in the crowd below. Those selected would cheer excitedly, while those left out would wear anxious expressions, their faces tense. In this manner, names were announced one after another. Finally, the list of the first 100 students of the Heavenly Star Academy was officially completed. Those who were chosen were filled with joy and excitement, while those who were not wore expressions of disappointment, remaining silent with lowered heads. Some were chatting around, seemingly attempting to use connections to change their situation, but it clearly had no effect. Originally, the climax of the ceremony ended here. Next, the school officials would lead the selected 100 students on a tour of the academy. However, with Tian Ming present, things took a different turn. As expected, Chen Fei's name was not on the list. Upon this realization, Tian Ming suddenly stood up and, looking at Wu Qi who was preparing to conclude his speech and leave, loudly declared, Great Spirit King, isn't this list unfair? With these words, the scene fell silent for a moment, and all eyes turned to Tian Ming. After all, who would dare to openly question the great spirit king like this? Wu Qi, however, remained composed and looked at Tian Ming, Tian Ming, what do you mean by this? Tian Ming replied, what do I mean? I've already said it. I think the list is unfair. I just heard the names of the first hundred people. Besides the talented students brought by the mansion lords, more than seventy of the remaining are from your great spirit mansion alone. The other mansions combined have barely twenty spots. Doesn't this seem inappropriate? After saying this, Tian Ming looked at the other mansion lords and urged them, Everyone, we respect the Great Spirit King, but it seems the Great Spirit King doesn't favor us. Treating us like outsiders. Several mansion lords' expressions changed slightly, but none spoke up. Obviously, no one wanted to provoke the Great Spirit King. 
Wu Qi was naturally prepared for this and said solemnly, the quota for the academy was discussed and agreed upon by me and all the mansion lords. No one had any objections. Qin Huanyu, the toady, immediately stood up and said, the great spirit king is right. We agreed long ago. Tian Ming, don't sow discord. Great spirit mansion has many talents and geniuses, so naturally, more of them were selected. There's nothing unfair about it, added Song Yun Tian as he also stood up. Ha, huh, what a swift lackey. Tian Ming mocked without reservation. He continued immediately, is that so? Then I'd like to ask, since all the major mansions have discussed this, why hasn't my great Ming mansion received an invitation? Even so, my great Ming mansion shouldn't be left without a single spot, right? Wu Qi's gaze hardened, and he spoke coldly. Great Ming mansion? I haven't heard of such a name. There's no such mansion, so naturally, there are no spots to discuss. Clearly, he was outright refusing to acknowledge the Great Ming Mansion. Tian Ming's eyes narrowed, but he immediately retorted, Great Spirit King doesn't know about Great Ming Mansion? All right then, what about Great Yan Mansion, Great Xia Mansion? The Great Spirit King must have heard of them. I can change the name to whatever you prefer. These two mansions used to have a good relationship with Great Spirit Mansion. Great Spirit King wouldn't blatantly lie and deny it. Wu Qi squinted his eyes and said coldly, Tian Ming, continuing to stir up trouble is pointless. I'll say this once, the Heavenly Star Academy will not have a place for you. Great Spirit King, this is blatant unfairness. My Great Ming Mansion is a member of the Starry Sky Domain. How can we be left out? Tian Ming questioned. Wu Qi's voice turned cold. The Heavenly Star Academy was established by my Great Spirit Mansion. Even if you talk until you're blue in the face, I will not accept you. Get lost. This was already a blatant attempt to kick someone out. Tian Ming didn't back down. Suddenly, he raised his voice and shouted, Lord Blood M.O., Wu Qi is rebellious and disloyal to the demon realm. Please punish him. At these words, Wu Qi's face immediately changed color, and he turned around angrily, shouting, Tian Ming, shut up. What nonsense are you spouting? After saying that, Wu Qi was about to make a move against Tian Ming. But at that moment, a figure dressed in black robes appeared silently at the direction of the platform. Wu Qi and the others quickly saluted, greetings, Lord Blood M.O. Hearing the name Blood M.O., the people below immediately knelt and bowed in a commotion. Because Lord Blood M.O. was the person sent by the Demon Realm to manage the Starry Sky Domain, responsible for overseeing it. He could be said to be Wu Qi's direct superior. Moreover, he was a true demon. He was the enemy that Tian Ming had opposed at the cost of war tens of thousands of years ago. The Mansion Lords couldn't help but wonder how Tian Ming would face his most hated enemy. And just then, an astonishing scene unfolded. Tian Ming suddenly rushed to Lord Blood Mo's side, knelt down with a bang, and cried out, Lord Blood Mo, please do justice for us. Ah! This scene dumbfounded everyone, leaving them speechless. Lord Blood Mo in the black robe finally spoke, speak. Tian Ming immediately began passionately. Lord Blood Mo, you must know that the Heavenly Star Academy is meant for the upcoming Selection Day training. The Selection Day held every thousand years is originally meant to select talents from the Starry Sky Domain to enter the Demon Realm, strengthen exchanges, and consolidate the Demon Realm's position. But now, Wu Qi is using his power for personal gain and acting recklessly during such an important Selection Day event, trampling on fairness and installing his close associates. Please think carefully, can these so-called geniuses selected in this manner shoulder the heavy responsibilities entrusted by the Demon Realm? And most of these people are Wu Qi's own men. After they achieve something in the Demon Realm in return, will they listen to the Lords of the Demon Realm, or to Great Spirit King? I have serious doubts. The Starry Sky Domain is not only the Great Spirit Mansion's domain, but Great Spirit King alone controls it. His hidden agenda is a betrayal of the Demon Realm, a rebellion against all the Demon Lords. Please, Lord Blood M.O., punish Wu Qi and uphold fairness. With these words finished, the scene fell into complete silence. Chapter 3750 after the silence, Wu Qi hurriedly spoke up to defend himself, Lord Blood M.O., this is all his nonsense. Please don't believe him. Moreover, this person harbors ill intentions and has always held great animosity towards the demon clan. Lord Blood M.O., don't let yourself be deceived by him. Tens of thousands of years ago, it was because of him that a great war broke out in our starry sky domain. At that time, Wu Qi quickly recounted Tian Ming's deeds, ending passionately, Lord Blood M.O., such a traitor cannot be trusted. Listening quietly, Blood M.O. turned his gaze towards Tian Ming and asked in a deep voice, Are those things true? Tian Ming's eyes shifted, his mouth moved, and he was about to speak. But at that moment, he felt an inexplicable aura emanating from Blood M.O., pressing down with such force that even his soul trembled lightly, feeling somewhat out of control. Demon's Methods Realizing he couldn't lie, Tian Ming immediately went forward and knocked his head several times with a loud thud. Lord Blood M.O., what happened back then was because I was young and naive, deceived by others, which led me to do such things. Now, I realize my mistakes and wholeheartedly support the demon clan. 
Please, Lord Bloodimo, give me another chance. I promise to serve diligently and make up for my past mistakes. Wu Qi stared at Tian Ming, who was begging for mercy, gritting his teeth, Lord Bloodimo, don't believe him. Tian Ming continued pleading, Lord Bloodimo, I sincerely regret my actions. Besides, back then, I was dismembered and suppressed. My body is still incomplete, and my head is still under Wu Qi's oppression, and my strength isn't even as good as it was before. Even if I had any ulterior motives, with my current strength, I couldn't possibly stir up any trouble. On the contrary, Wu Qi, over these years, with all the support from the demon clan, his strength has improved significantly, and he has become the foremost figure in our starry sky domain. If anyone like him were to rebel, it's something you, Lord Blood Mo, should be concerned about. Angered by this, Wu Qi retorted, Tian Ming, how dare you sow discord? My loyalty to the demon clan has been witnessed by Lord Blood Mo for tens of thousands of years. Your few words won't sway him. Then how do you explain this nepotism? Tian Ming persisted, grabbing onto this issue. Wu Qi couldn't explain it for a moment, as he indeed had some selfish motives in this matter, so he focused on Tian Ming's past actions. For a while, the two argued fiercely in front of Blood Mo. Finally, Blood Mo, who had remained silent, spoke up, silence. The scene immediately quieted down, with everyone looking at Blood Mo. Blood Mo's gaze swept over the two, finally settling on Tian Ming. After a few seconds of silence, he spoke again, since he is a traitor, he cannot escape punishment. Seize him. Upon hearing this, Wu Qi's face lit up with joy, his energy instantly surging as he prepared to act against Tian Ming. Chen Fei and Chen Hua, seeing this, felt uneasy and instinctively wanted to mobilize their energy to intervene. But at the critical moment, Tian Ming's voice transmitted through their souls, do not act rashly. Tian Ming, you've been evading for so long. It's time for your reckoning. Wu Qi rejoiced, his techniques closing in on Tian Ming. Meanwhile, Tian Ming, kneeling before Blood Mo, showed no intention of resistance. Just at this crucial moment, a bewitching female voice suddenly rang out, Stop. Wu Qi immediately felt his movements halt, as if blocked by an invisible force. Then, amidst the curious gazes of everyone, a graceful woman in black attire, slender and with pointed ears, walked gracefully through the air. This is... Just as everyone was curious, Blood Mo, who was seated, suddenly stood up and looked at the graceful woman. He spoke, Princess Yuna, why have you come? The graceful woman chuckled softly, Governor Blood Mo, are you not welcoming me? Blood Mo shook his head, of course not, Princess Yuna, your visit honors me. However, regarding this prisoner, I wonder if Princess Yuna... As he spoke, Blood Mo glanced at Tian Ming. Yuna lightly smiled and said, I heard everything just now. I actually think that what this person said makes some sense. Instantly, the expressions of both Blood Mo and Wu Qi turned solemn. Wu Qi hurriedly explained, Princess Yuna, perhaps you are unaware. I. Yuna waved her hand, interrupting Wu Qi, I don't want to hear so much. I just want to know whether you have selected the best talents for my demon clan. Wu Qi nodded, I have been trying my best. However, as soon as he finished speaking, Tian Ming seized the opportunity to speak, Princess Yuna, he is lying. My disciple's strength is no weaker than those he selected, yet he has been unjustly sidelined. This is clearly favoritism. Tian Ming, you. Wu Qi was furious, ready to take action. But Yuna spoke up, is that so? If that's the case, why not let them compete? Let's see who's truly capable. The truth will be clear then. Governor Blood Mo, what do you think? With Princess Yuna speaking up, Blood Mo naturally couldn't object. He nodded and said, Princess Yuna makes a valid point. Very well, let's begin. I want to see for myself the level of talent cultivated by the Starry Sky Domain for our demon realm over these years. Tian Ming quickly transmitted to Chen Fei, Kid, seize the opportunity. Chen Fei immediately stepped forward, looking at Wu Jing and his group opposite him, and declared loudly, who dares to battle? Step forward. Wu Jing and the others, still somewhat puzzled, looked to Wu Qi for guidance. Seeing this, Yuna frowned slightly and murmured softly, are these so-called talents lacking even this much courage? Upon hearing this, Wu Qi quickly transmitted to Wu Jing and the others, give it your all. You must suppress that kid, understand? Yes, Grandpa, rest assured, I'll make sure of it, Wu Jing assured him. Then, Wu Jing stepped forward first. If it were before, given his cautious nature, he wouldn't have acted so recklessly. But now, with the situation being special and having briefly clashed with Chen Fei before, he was quite confident and believed he had a 90% chance of winning. Therefore, Wu Jing was brimming with confidence. I, Wu Jing, Lord of the Great Spirit Mansion, will battle you. Chen Fei remained silent, just shrugging lightly. Energy surged within his body. Both divine bodies activated, guarding critical parts of his body. Qi surged violently, flowing through every limb and bone, nine martial intents rapidly stacking up and integrating into the Nine Extreme Sword. At the same time, treasures like the Ice Soul Pearl within the Nine Extreme Sword erupted in power. Even more, Chen Fei utilized the aura of the World Tree Seal, condensing it upon the Nine Extreme Sword. 
In that moment, Chen Fei unleashed nearly half his tactics, exploding instantaneously and transforming into a sword that slashed towards Wu Jing. Nine Extreme Sword, Slash. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Your support means a lot. And, if you want to read other novels, you can also try and check these videos.